In the White House, President Eisenhower signs the proclamation that makes Alaska's entry into the Union official, nearly 92 years after Lincoln's Secretary of State bought the territory from the Russian Tsar for $7 million. The Alaska Wild Project podcast is brought to you by the following sponsors. The Bait Shack. Located on Ship Creek upstream of the bridge, can't miss the bright red shack. They're the go-to fishing gear rental and guide service on Ship Creek. Tight lines and fish on. Come hook into the action with them. Hit them up at thebaitshackak.com. Lawn Pro AK, your year-round professional property maintenance company, providing services such as weekly lawn maintenance, driveway sweeping, snow and ice management, and tons more. Get your free estimate today at LawnProAK.com. Anchortown Dogs, located at 4th Avenue across from the old 4th Avenue Theater. Look for the blue and gold umbrella. From reindeer dogs to bomb euros, they've got you covered. Anchortown Dogs, your local gourmet hot dog and sausage cart. Menegato's Accounting, locally owned and operated advisory and tax accounting solutions. Passion, experience, diligence. Learn more at menegatosaccounting.com. Double Shovel Cider Company, located off Arctic and 58th. Handcrafted Alaskan made cider. They also have a tap room downtown on the corner of 5th and E. Check them out at doubleshovelcider.com. Serrano's Mexican Grill, two locations, one on Tudor, one on Northern Lights. The Northern Lights location has their new tequila bar. Check it out. Also see their daily specials at serranosmexicangrill.com. AKO Farms, located in Sitka, Alaska, built from the ground up with concentrates as their single motivation. Find their products such as their sugar wax, full spectrum diamond sauce carts, and more at the Treehouse AK and other dispensaries around the state. Ask your local bud tender about AKO. The TreehouseAK.com, located at 341 Boniface Parkway, your all-in-one cannabis and CBD store. Ask the bud tender what the strain of the day is to get your 10% off. The Treehouse, where the culture lives. Marijuana has intoxicating effects and may be habit-forming and addictive. Marijuana impairs concentration, coordination, and judgment. Do not operate a vehicle or machinery under the influence. There are health risks associated with consumption of marijuana. For the use of only by adults 21 and older, keep out of the reach of children, and marijuana should not be used by women who are pregnant or breastfeeding. Tailored Restoration 24-Hour Emergency Home Services, helping Alaskans restore their dreams since 1972. Services include fire, water, mold, post-emergency cleaning, repair, and remodeling. Give them a call in Anchorage, Eagle River, Matsu, or Fairbanks. Hit them up at tailoredrestorationalaska.com. Oh, oh, no. Is this thing on, bro? Oh, we're on the live, baby. No caribou calls, though, because we're nah, at the caribou center. Not, not this time. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> caribou, <laughs> caribou call headquarters? There's Car- a lot of caribou calls right over there. Oh, plenty oh, of caribou yeah. calls Caribbean on draft. Board. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What's a caribou I'll call on up. draft? It's like the sound of money. No, oh, cha-ching. <laughs> oh, cha-ching, okay. cha-ching, cha-ching, cha-ching. I was thinking the sound of joy. <laughs> or that. I mean, well, joy, joy is also followed by receiving money, so that's, that's good. true. Sometimes. I mean, that's true. Yeah. Lots yeah, of smiles. Sometimes. <laughs> is that thing moving on you? I think I got it. Now. Okay. All right. Good. Well, oh, wow. uh, welcome to uh, I want to say hardcore. episode seventeen. <laughs> we are one seven. Dude. One seven. One episode seven. seventeen of the Alaska Wild Project podcast. We are here podcasting live from Double Shovel Cider Company um, for our Dudes a Day event that we linked up with Double Shovel to do. We have Katie here from Double Shovel, who <laughs> is their marketing guru, um, mm-hmm. the uh, setter upper of all these events. The uh, behind the scenes person who's making sure all this thing is happening. Uh, The person you want to call if you need to know where there's more tape to put your banner up. (laughs) Or uh, what kind of cider you got or what time you guys are open or what food truck's there. Um, Katie, thanks for coming out. Thanks for setting up this awesome event. Thank you. Do you feel more relaxed now that it's going or? Yeah. Okay. It was a little stressful this morning. Yeah. It It always is. We have a lot going on today. (laughs) You handled it well. I could tell you were on point. Yeah. And... I think you you had some anxiety about some things <laughs> transpiring, but it all came together. Yeah. It looks good. Yeah. yeah. AK yep. Curdy Cat says, "Hey, Katie." Hello. <laughs> <laughs> it like takes she a said, second. I'm like, wait. No, it is. There's like a yeah. delay. I didn't realize there's a slight delay. <laughs> Whose handle is that again? No. Yeah. 
AK Critty Cat. So, so Katie delivered this event for us, the due date event, and at the same time, it's delivering the, the Solstice event downtown. So yeah. it's a huge day for you. Lots of things today. So what... I, I uh, you know, I had a setup down there too. Did you? They shut the road off right there. Yeah. So yeah, our street, East Street's all closed. They've got a few bands going, um, and then we have a beer garden set up outside uh, Anchorage Cider House. Oh, nice. Yeah. yeah. So just ciders? Or are you guys doing some of the other? There's four ciders, four beers or seltzers from Alaskan Brewing, and then pizza by the slice. Okay. And that's yeah. all day today. Nice, nice. Yeah. And then Tangy and Patrick are down there. Yeah. Holding oh, is that it down. Where they went? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. They disappeared. I wonder. Yeah. yeah. So today we have uh, a lot of vendors that are down here at Dude's Day. Um, we have Alaska Axe Company. Uh, we got Alaska Rock Gym, Alaska Coffee Company, Hoarding Marmot, uh, Chugi Atch Clothing, Shaggy Sauce, Mountain View Sports. Um, what's TGB? I think the, the, it's the gift box. Oh, the gift yeah, box. Yeah, they got oh, some yeah. really, really dope boxes. Yeah, yeah. They're, they just started, and I they're very yeah. last minute vendor someone mm-hmm. had posted something like two days ago and i was like hey you guys have those boxes do you want to come so they yeah. were able to make it work the yeah, boxes right seem cool. legit when you yeah. walk over there it's something for every dude i mean they're, they're oh, pre-built time, so dude. it's like if you don't know what to get your dude you just come down here or your dad and you get one of those boxes yeah awesome yeah, that's awesome and then totally kick sled tricky. alaska's here um with wow. their with their awesome yeah. sleds uh full core archery is also here yep. um also we're here with all our stuff double shovels here local greens is here yep. i'm sorry with uh with all the greens pick up the bags we've got jerome's kitchen and we have johnny's just johnny's food John- truck yeah johnny's kitchen johnny's kitchen johnny's yeah. kitchen yeah. yeah so plenty of food and stuff like that and dude's day is an event this is the second annual dude's day and this is an event that's most likely going to continue yearly yes yeah it'll be hopefully father's day yeah it'll, the first one we ever did was during christmas um and then it was such a success we were like okay we'll do it for father's day but that was during covid so we had to skip last year and now we're back. Yeah. Yep. And that one was inside, whereas this one's mm-hmm. all outdoors. And yeah. we had a little bit of rain this morning, but everyone brought out the canopies and yep. the weather turned for us. Yeah. As yep. I was telling the girls behind us, you know, stay positive. It's going to get nice. It will. Will it to happen? Yeah, Alaska yeah. style, right? Just wait 15 minutes, it'll change. It's cliche, <laughs> but it's right. true. It's so true. It's like, yeah, just a couple hours will be fine. Yeah, yeah. the yeah, sun's around. beaming out. You know, it's yeah. breaking away. Warmed away up, from too. These. It was a little chilly. It was a little chilly this morning. It was. Yeah. Yeah, I pulled up and Katie was wearing a beanie, and I was like, "Oh, okay." Like, <laughs> I am still well, wearing uh, the beanie. Yeah, you are. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> it she was like right. ahead. And then we yeah. have this, you know, the axe throwing the activity, and then this yeah. this game over here, the cornhole game. That was pretty fun. Brandon and I played that. I hadn't oh, played that man. before. I got demolished, man. Jack came through there for a warm up throw or two. I got super or lucky. Cream. Aim small, miss small, baby. That's Just it. like shooting a bow yeah. or a rifle and. Uh, Change that mentality small, and small. Yeah. start going that hole. I was just erratic and everywhere. So yeah, it, it was, was good. It was cool <laughs> how the the rock chim dude's dog Toke was fetching. Yeah, he was. The, and he had like a soft mouth. So yeah, he, he was a good like boy. Yeah. Wasn't it. puncturing the. Yeah. No, he it wasn't. was really cool. And he grabbed your your repaired bag. I was like, oh man, be careful uh, with that one, bud. My electrical taped up bag. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that one's you a little a lighter. Fine job. I tried. It's we didn't like have duct tape. I couldn't find any in the back, so I went. It was electrical or pa- or the painter's tape, so I went electrical. Nice. <laughs> Good move. More stretch to it. Mm-hmm. Um, well, it seems like a lot of people are filtering in here. Yeah. yeah um, a lot of, lot of really cool stuff. I, I got my eye on a couple things. Uh, definitely one of those hoodies from uh, the Chugach yeah. clothing. Oh, yeah. That really story cool. is really cool. He's like 15 years old and started it, yes. this like screen printing company in the middle of COVID. So his dad yeah. was the one who like reached out to us and I was like, heck yeah, you're... Yeah. 15 year old son, like that's the cutest thing. Absolutely. Alaskan kid. Yeah. Little Getting entrepreneur. Come yeah. Out and support him for totally. sure. See his, his, uh, his, his motto is live life rad. Live oh, life rad. That's you, that's you all day, oh, Jack. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, think I, I think he needs a trip in the drift boat. I think we should that. bring him I'm over here you. first, huh? Yeah. yeah. That would be cool. Yeah. 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 Is he down? Yeah, I already he was, told yeah. him he said he's going to come down. He was the only one. His dad was like, what's Why happening? You guys go get the and the kid was like, oh, I think that's a podcast. Dad didn't know what. He yeah. was talking about. You want to get yeah. him on right now? Yeah, we'll bring him on right now. No, his dad said one day is he woke up and he's like, Dad, I need 500 bucks. And he's like, for what? He's like, I want to start a shirt company. And that was it. And his dad was like, okay. Show me the proofs. Show me the proofs, yeah. What yeah. a cool dad, for yeah. one. You know? Sure. And then the kid to just be entrepreneurial to set it up. So we're going to get him over yeah. here. 
and uh, see if we can't chat them up and see uh, oh, yeah. Full Game smiles. On see what's going on. Full smiles coming over. Game on, Jack. Katie, also, uh, we're going to come back to Katie a little later when she's had a couple more ciders. And that is water. Yeah. I yeah. know. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We're talking we about the ciders later. Later. Later, yeah. later oh, okay. ciders. Like, after, after, after lunch. Later ciders. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. When all the car- the big caribou herd comes in. Yeah. We yes. couldn't do the calls because we're outside the licensed premise. So yes. No. Everything out here is non-alcoholic. Yes. We will be taking breaks to have some uh, caribou calls. Okay. Yeah. I'm Let's swapping out. Yeah. You're swapping okay. out. Okay. Thanks, right. Katie. Thanks, Katie. You're welcome. All right. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, come on in there. Put these Have headphones on. Get a little close to the mic there so you can hear yourself. Tell me what your name is again. Uh, Brady. Brady. All right, you're going to talk right into that. Brady. Yeah, pull it down for him a little bit so it's like, there we there go. There you go. All Brady, right. w- thanks for coming on for one. Yep. Um, I want to hear the story about uh, your dad told us that one day you, you woke him up and you said, I need 500 bucks. Can you tell <laughs> us tell us your point of that Uh that story there what was that pitch <laughs> uh yeah so it was during quarantine and um i was just really bored and i got this app it was a graphic design app on my phone and i was just messing around with some designs and i i made this space design our logo yeah i was like oh this would look pretty cool on a t-shirt and i was just like trying to make some money as a teenager um without wow. a job too busy for that and i was like this could be a cool t-shirt design and I was kind of nervous about asking my dad, but he went through with it, and now we have about 10 designs. 10 wow. designs. Awesome. Yeah. So it's called Chugiak Clothing, and and the brand is Live Life Rad. Is yeah. there a website? Uh, yeah, chugiachclothing.square.site. Chugiachclothing.square.site. It's Living Life Rad, bro. Yeah. Living live live Life yeah. Rad. Yeah. Yeah. So this yeah. design is obviously a design of like a mountain? Uh, yeah, so all of our designs are based off the Chugach Mountain Range. Okay. Yep. Uh, gotcha. Right behind Anchorage. Mm-hmm. Um, our base design is O'Malley. Yeah. Um, it looks like yeah. O'Malley. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. And so all of our designs are pretty much Alaska based. Um, and once I get a little bit more um, profit and stuff, uh, I'm going to go a little bit out and just make some more generic designs. But for right now, we have skiing, um, biking, and all that good stuff. Yeah. Skiing, wow. biking. He's got some really, really cool one. I think I saw a stand-up paddleboard one. Did you have something Not like that? Yet, but Not uh, yet. Yeah, okay. Yeah, a lot of yeah, stuff is the other one. So why O'Malley Peak? Um, I that's my favorite like hike during yeah. the summer, and yeah. I just love the way it looks, how it's like rigid and stuff. Yeah. Um, and I saw this picture on the internet, and I just wanted to recreate it. Yeah. Um, so our base design. It's O'Malley with the sun behind it. Oh, yeah. yeah. And okay. it just looks really cool. And yeah. It's been used a lot. So that would so. be sunrise, right? Uh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. So yep. Ha- have you been up to O'Malley this year yet? Uh, not yet. Too so, busy. But. Too so, busy slanging so, shirts, bro. Yeah, he's so got right, stuff going on right now it's perfect because that, that first saddle that you climb up between O'Malley and between Little O'Malley and False mm-hmm. Peak, right now that has like a toboggan sled, like like a bobcat, a bobsledding track built into mm-hmm. it. And so the oh, other really? other people had made it. And so I just did that one the other day. And I was going as fast down that s- snow as you do skiing. On just my, on my, on just my sliding butt. on your butt? Yeah, yeah. just cruising down in Whoa. shorts, no shirt. It was a hot day. And just plowed into the – so what's cool about that, that like, draw, the snowbank, uh, it softens up because it's south-facing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and so you get that corn, uh, corn. But – so many people have got, done it. It's dug in nice. And then instead it's of like just luge, getting like shot luge. out this luge at the yeah. end yeah. <laughs> into rocks, it l- runs into that trail where it's like muddy coming mm-hmm. on the left. So it's safe landing. Oh, okay. Like you can just plow Kinda into that right mud in there. and you're fine. Yeah. You know? yeah. But it was it was pretty rad. So right now is the time to get it. Yeah, nice. I love going the scree fall uh, from the face down. It's super fun, especially with my friends. We all oh, race yeah. each other yeah. uh, from just the top and just screw that whole thing down. D- dig face. your heel in. Uh-huh. Yeah, wow. dude. All right, cool. You have to get the, the socks, too. That way the rocks don't even get yeah. into your shoes. Yeah, oh, or, and a lot process. of people like to duct tape. Do you yeah. duct tape? I don't do the duct tape. Yeah, all right, yeah. <laughs> I do yeah. the socks. <laughs> so you don't get nice, the shoes. Nice, yeah. man. There you go. Chew- Chugach clothing. Chugach. Uh, what's the Chugach. Chugach. What's the, um, is there an Instagram? Uh, yeah, it's Chugach underscore clothing. Chugach right underscore man. clothing. So the li- living life rad motto that is that's awesome. I think uh, I mean I'm 100 percent behind that. But how, how did that become your motto? Um, not. I mean I just uh, I don't know. It just kind of appeared in my head because I needed a 
a motto that really stuck with me. Uh-huh. Uh huh. And I love the word rad, so and I just wanted to do something <laughs> with that. So yeah, love to live rad. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, you know, back in the eighties and nineties, you know, we were little dudes growing up. Rad was like the word. Mm-hmm. It was oh, radical. that was the old BMX. Oh, yeah. the and, old then, BMX. And, then it, and then it feels like it kind of like faded out in the like two thousands. It was yeah. like yeah, you yeah. were kind of a like. You're kind of old dork if you still say rad. Well, now it's like, nah, it's that, was a, back, that was dude. a badass word and always has been. So living well, life just rad, like all man, the other I things that it. are coming back. I mean, like the style now is it for women is the style like when we were in high school. Oh, yeah. yeah the stonewash sure. jeans yep. up yep. high, uh-huh. the coveralls, yeah. the, bro, the loose the bro, baggy the stuff. The bro haircuts like this boy yeah. here. Dude, yeah. I'm just yeah. waiting for the yeah. side yeah. spike to come back, dude. Me and Carlo, bro. <laughs> And we always had blades. the side spike, bro. Like, we just wait. I might just hit Mateo No with the side spike, dude. Just start bring the it trend. Back. Yeah, yeah, to start the trend back. The lightning yeah. bolts. Yeah. Yeah, lightning dude. bolts. Oh, yeah. So, so you come out to all these events with your dad mostly? Uh, yeah, this is only our second event. Um, we did oh. uh, one at 49th State Brewing Company during nice. the winter. Nice. That got, like, we made about 600. Right on. Um, all right. We haven't made any profit yet, but we've, we've but sold about 2000 worth. But honestly, I'm okay with that. With COVID, it's been a rough start. Uh, we've been trying to do Girdwood Forest Fair this summer. Mm-hmm. Can't do that, obviously. Right. Yeah. And maybe try and go out to Mount Marathon, but don't even know if that's happening. So, yeah. yeah, it's just, yeah. What about Salmon Fest? And we were looking at that one, but unfortunately, we're going to be out of town for that oh, one. Oh, yeah. But that yeah. one would have been really fun. Yeah, that's too. a good one. Right. Well, it seems like a lot of these events are coming back. Um, obviously, today, Solstice is going down uh, downtown, and they did say the 4th of July festival is back right. on. And, and I would assume events like uh, Arctic Man might be good for you mm-hmm. or even Tailgate, uh, things like that. If you need any help, man, hit us up, dude, because we have contacts with all these people that do these events, and we could just slide you in and get some of that live life rad stuff going. Living man. life yeah. rad, living yeah, life bro. rad. Yeah, man. Thanks for doing what you're doing, and, and keep up the hard work, and don't let don't let the grind and and the idea of not making money get. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just keep going. It'll all come around, man. And honestly, it's really fun. Even if I don't make, just the whole environment of these the events, vi- the vibe, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. Just getting to play cornhole. Just yeah, yeah just hang fun. out. Just, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. that's the thing with any business at first. You know you're not going to make money. You're having right. fun, and you keep reinvesting your money, and yep. you're learning about business, and eventually it, it pays off. Hell so yeah. keep plugging away, Brady. We fucking yeah. love it. Yeah, yeah, yeah dude. Yeah. Good yeah. job, Brady. Thank Good you. job, man. Right Thanks on, for man. coming out here. Yeah. Thank Go you. sell yeah. some shirts. I got my eye on that blue one, so make sure you save me an XL, okay? All right. <laughs> hey, All right. Thanks for coming out, Brady. All right, man. Right cool. on, man. Brady from Chew Gatch. Living life rad. Living life rad. I like that logo. Yeah, it's you awesome. You know, you know what I get most from that is um, just that I, I worry about the future of kids, and I know this is gonna be a sensitive subject, but I think about the generations of. Uh, hey, Robert. What's up, man? Um, I think about the generations and how they change, and I would say that our our generation of parents and grandfathers would say things about our you know our generations and. Anyway, my point is, is that I like to see a kid, kids are on their phones, video games are distracted with so many things that deter them yeah. from doing careers or being entrepreneurs, that he is really, he's changing it. He's doing what a kid yeah. should be doing and looking at his future and, and kind of doing grown up stuff, but yeah. still being a kid. And, and it gives me pride to know that there are still kids and in, in the future out there where there are people that still want to do that kind yeah. of thing. Well, I think, I think credit to... Um I, I know a lot of these kids they want to be YouTubers this day, but mm-hmm. really what that is is self-employed. You know, yeah. if you want to be a YouTuber, they're all about selling merch. They're all about branding. They're all about you know selling what they have, marketing. their personality, marketing. Yeah, yeah. Yep. So all that, you know, if you want to be a YouTuber, you can apply that same thing to if you want to be a T-shirt guy or you want to have a food truck one day. Any of these kids that are out here Small thinking business. about it, like that's just the first thing they see because you know they're young and that's their only exposure that they might yeah. have. Have you heard that from your kids? Any idea like they want to be a, th- like this guy or that guy? or? Yeah, um, Paxton says he's going to be the mayor. Oh, he's going to be the oh, mayor. Okay. <laughs> and uh, his first job as mayor is he's going to make CJ, who works for the city to, or the muni, to uh, work at Double Shovel. So if that's our current game plan, <laughs> they're also going to so open gonna some. So he's going to get him fired and then No, no he's going to just, you, he's not going to fire him. He's going to use the municipality to, to subsidize Double Shovel. Oh, uh, okay. Got I you. mean, wow. that's All adult right. lingo. Yeah. But, right. Yeah. He, he's not yeah. getting fired. He's borrowing him. Got but, it. Yeah. Got it. Okay. And then they're going to open some sort of store, but I, I don't quite understand what's in it in the store. 
for. Yeah, good job. But the, the cool thing about, you know, another cool point about what Brady's up to over here is, like, he had an idea. He was encouraged, supported by his parents. Yep. They didn't go, hey, this is a bad idea, whatever. And then his dad showing up on a Saturday in June yeah. to, like, support his kid's business. Yeah. I'm, yep. sure, I'm sure the family doesn't need, you know... Yeah. The shirt sales. This is yeah. all about supporting his kid's idea, yep. and it builds it builds that trust, that um, confidence in him. That you know. So, and then Brady gets to see what other jobs can be like instead of kind of our generation. I was growing up was like, hey, you should get a job with a the company. They'll support you. It comes with a pension and all hey, these like things. Have a seat instead, it's on. like get out there, do the stuff that you want to do, w- have w- fun. W- and if you don't like I, that idea, let's switch to this other idea. So just yeah. try to stay it's, to the it's cool. I like yeah. it. He's just opened up to a whole world. If I tell you to come closer um, to the mic, come a, a little at closer. A, at an age where you're you're just a sponge, you know, and and the company's I love it. I just love it for the future TV. of generations and kids, and I just hope more kids learn from Get Brady and, and follow Get in his far. footsteps. Yeah, that's what America's all about. We don't want to get into all that. Just saying that that's what. What, There's know, opportunity. It is yep. opportunities. And, you got it. And we have opportunities as yep. parents, as mentors, as you know, people that inspire young people to hey, you know, look outside the box. What is the, what is it that makes you tick? What are your ideas, and how can we make those things happen? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's great. Uh, so now we have uh, Taylor here from the Gift Bar. Hello, hello, bar. Taylor. Thanks Hi, for coming Taylor. out. What's up, Taylor? Happy to be here. Heck yeah. Um, so the first thing I noticed on uh, Taylor's booth was the rad TGB logo lighted sign, yes. like yeah. straight it's up legit. Hollywood. Yeah, <laughs> it pops. Okay, it yeah. does. Yeah. 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 Got to stand out somehow. Yeah. 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 Well, they're about three feet tall each letter. Yeah. Yeah. I bet you got. Do you cool. wrap those in? Like, how do you transport those? You wrap them in just kind of like a blanket, basically. Nothing oh, fancy at all. Okay. But yeah, they they're good in the rain. They're good everywhere. Yeah, that's really, really cool. Where did you even get those? So Alpha Lit Anchorage is another Anchorage-based company oh, cool. that rents them out for events and, um, yeah, anything fun. So we use them way too much. We use wow. them for <laughs> every event possible, but, yeah, yeah, they're too cute not to. It's yeah, a really great style. Like, it really oh, is yeah. just, it gets bright and vibrant, like, mm-hmm. just looks positive, whatever's going on right, right? there. Like it's it looks real day. clean. Clean, yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah it looks yeah. good. Love it. Yeah, yeah, we love them. So tell us about the gift bar. What do you guys got going on over there? So we are a modern gifting boutique. Um, we source basically just the most personal, thoughtful gifts that you can think of, um, and we do them for every occasion. So whether it's a new baby, a wedding, a birthday... Thanksgiving, you know, whatever Father's you celebrate Day. Father's Day. Yeah. <laughs> <That's true. laughs> um, also known as Dude's Day. Yeah. So pretty much, I mean, anything you're celebrating, we are here to curate a gift for you. And so, so these are, Father's Day is kind of the first um, Dude's products that we've gotten in. And so really excited to kind of expand. We were very like female in the beginning and mm-hmm. now kind of doing both sides. So. Yeah. So what's yeah. in the Dude boxes? Do boxes, we have everything. We kind of have like a whiskey guy, a golf guy, a fishing guy, kind of like you're out, mostly outdoorsy Alaska vibe, I'd say, but. Are those yeah. all separate boxes? Yeah. Oh, okay. But a lot of it, like, we'll mix and match depending on who the person is. Mm. Okay. Um, whoever's buying it will kind of tell us about the guy, your dad, whatever, and um, we'll go from there and just kind of make it personal and special to that person and exactly what they would like and want. Um, just to make it different than just going out to buy a generalized box that you can kind of get anywhere. Nice. Yeah. You guys so have creative. a um, so a website, Instagram, all that stuff? We're mostly on Instagram and Facebook, so it's just at Gift Bar and Co. At and Gift Bar and Co. Mm-hmm. And so we kind of do all of our dealings through there. And happy to be at our first market today. Did I write yeah. that down correctly? Oh, this is that your first Gift market? Gift Bar and Co.? Yeah. yeah. That's so That's cool. Me. Okay. Yeah. So where, how have you sold before? Do you have a storefront or? No, we've never had a storefront. Uh, We're all basically online, word of mouth, that sort of thing. Okay. We just launched this Mother's Day, actually. Oh, we okay. We sent out, yeah, uh, boxes to all of our mom friends, and that is kind of how we launched. And yeah, we've just been taking it from there. That's so right. Wow. And who started the business with you? My mother. Yeah. And I. Yeah. Yeah. She's yeah. over there, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's her. Yeah. And what's her She's name? Cool. Tammy. 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 Yeah. yeah. So she used to send me all these boxes when I was out away for college. She would send me for Easter or Thanksgiving, oh, whatever. What mom. Yeah. yeah. And she was like, well, why don't we just do it ourselves? So. Very cool. Yeah. So organic, so yeah. What's the, um, like, the turnaround? Let's say I say, hey, um, 
I'm looking for a box for my dad. He's into fishing. Um, he's into eating. He likes whiskey and he smokes cigars. <laughs> Love it. So, Love it. like, what would be the, like, hey, I need it by this date and you guys get it there? Or do you say it's like a two weeks? We wait? love as much time as we can get, obviously. Yeah. It makes it the best that Just it can be. But we are also those late, last minute people that need a Father's Day box for tomorrow. And so, yeah. if you come to us and say, it's my girlfriend's birthday tomorrow, I need a box, like, we'll get a box for you. No problem. Right Just kind of make it happen. So, obviously, the more time you have, the better it's going to be, the more personal. But. Yeah, we like to. We, we get that some people don't always plan ahead, you know? Yeah, a lot yeah. of us don't. Yeah. yeah. Plenty yeah. Of For those type of things. I'm like, there too. Oh, anniversary's tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, I almost uh, want to sign up with my calendar right now. I know. Like, exactly. Can I get a box this year? We'll call you. Yeah. We'll call you. Send in a purchase order and just call yeah. lined out for the year. Yeah, that's actually a great idea. Yeah. People are tired of me giving double shovel stuff. So. <laughs> Yeah, here's a double show uh, yeah. shirt. Yeah, no, here's those, a bag of greens. Those, bo- <laughs> those boxes are beautiful, man. That uh, that Thank one you. with the kill sauce. <laughs> Love those. Damn, that one there was had my I had my eye on that. Some good barbecue stuff in yeah, there. Yeah, I was like, okay, all right, mm-hmm. that's what they're into over here. So uh, that's nice. What other uh, events you guys maybe have planned to go set up at? Or I don't know. You guys know of any good ones? We do actually. We yeah. got a few coming up. And actually, we'll get your guys' email as well. Yeah. And we're talking with um, Brady from the Chugach. A clothing company for some other events yeah. that are coming up. Um, awesome. I think something like uh, have a cool thing at the Coho Derby that day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah downtown at the Ship Creek at the okay. Big Shack. Very yeah. cool. Yeah. There's like a really a, cool thing going on down there. A one day silver salmon derby. Would That's love it. to. It'd be really yeah. fun. Yeah, that'd awesome. be huge. Yeah, we'll definitely get the emails connected, and whenever there's another event, we'll yeah. let everyone know to come out and you can Gotta set do it. up. They're fun. Yeah. yeah, we're all, we're all just shovel. like the same as you. You know, we're getting this thing started off the ground. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's really cool if we can all promote each other and, and actually right? do, it, do it together, um, you know, with the community and everything. I yeah. love it, man. Yeah. It's really cool. It's so cool to be a part of. It is. Yeah. Um, well, yeah. my anniversary is coming up. There we go. <laughs> and I'm going to need covered. something. Yeah. Okay. There you go. It's, mm-hmm. it's July 7th. Okay. So we have an, until July 6th. Uh-huh. To get it ready, and I'll give you the rundown on okay. what she likes and Absolutely. what she does. Absolutely, would love right. to. Cool. Taylor, thanks for coming out, Thank and tell us again the the Instagram is at Gift Bar and Co. At Gift Bar and Co. That's it. Awesome. Thanks for coming cool. down. Thank Hope you, you saw so a lot, much. and I definitely will come get that. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. we'll be back July sixth. Yeah. <laughs> thanks, <laughs> Taylor. Thanks, thanks for coming on. Yeah, no, that that is a really cool setup down there. Yeah, they got yeah, it. They got it dialed, man. <laughs> yeah. They got the one with the kill sauce and the Yeti cup and like some other smoked. Smoke stick that you can cook with or something, oh. uh, dude. I mean, oh, super oh, creative. Like a, oh, you know that's actually a really good idea. Like they make the like you know how they have the thing that heats that takes the temperature. Yeah, yeah. But if it just got hot and then you just cook, put the hot dog in there and turn it on and just cooks it from the inside right, out. From the inside, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what would like be a, the like name a, of so, that? Like a solder. Yeah. It's like a soldering yeah. thing, you know. Yeah, yeah. I, I keep on know. thinking of a lot of alien references on yeah. that. Uh, one, but, uh, God, yeah, that I can only think of names we can't really say. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I kind of paused there and that got really graphic for me. I was yeah. like, man, there's a lot of yeah. weird. The stick is inside the hot dog. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It cooks. Man. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, Sorry to get your guys' uh, uh, minds on there. there. Daniel's always here thinking about cooking yeah. hot dogs. Yeah, this is a family event. He's the hot Sorry. dog, man. Yeah. Like, okay. How can I cook these hot dogs Clean faster? Clean that up a little bit. I know what I'll do. <laughs> uh, why don't we get the Rock Gym guy over here? Let's let's get him over here. Yeah. He's all looking he like, like he's he, uh, chilling. Like he's ready to climb something. He's over there, like, ready to climb that fence up. Oh, he doesn't want to chat. He's shy. He's shy. (laughs) Oh, he doesn't want to come. Okay, we'll get the next guy then. If he doesn't want to come, it's all right. Oh, we got him. We got him. We got him. All right, come on. (laughs) Just a conversation. Just a conversation. (laughs) Lure him in. Lure him in. All right, come on over here. (laughs) I like that actual, that chair. That little padding there. Oh, yeah, it's cozy. Yeah, dude. Yeah. That looks cozy. That almost looks like uh, one of those, like ones in the motorhome, you know, that kind of comes out or a boat oh, one yeah, that you could yeah, turn yeah. into a bed or something. Oh, yeah. If you just good. had one more layer to it, it could just be like a, a bed as well, you know, for your boat. Is that thing pretty light? Out, Matt? Well, that's actually a legitimate crash pad. So oh, it is. Oh, it is. It's oh, like okay. real ballistic foam with the backpack straps on it and everything. So yeah, if it ever foam. got like so haggard that we didn't want to have it out at the gym we just take it and actually go climbing with it ah <laughs> cool. what's yeah. the um what's the rock gym's uh instagram handle 
Uh, I think it's just Alaska Rock Gym. Alaska Rock Gym. Alaska Gym. Yeah. All right, yeah. brother. Your name is? Eric Wickenheiser. Eric Wickenheiser, man. Thanks for coming over. I yeah, know dude. you're like, I don't know, man. But yeah, it's no. all good. I'm a podcast fanatic. So Are you really? The cost. Yeah, oh, hell know. yeah, man. You're Get pr- over here then. Yeah. yeah. Were you just nervous to come over here? Or? I'm just lazy, man. <laughs> <laughs> that must I be a nice pad. He was comfortable, man. <laughs> yeah, that angle. Yeah, he's Saturday, in a nice little pad. You know? <laughs> yeah. Actually, I just got back from vacation, so I've worked like two days. Okay. And so I'm just like still oh, kind of coasting. Still in the vacation that. mode? Yeah, man. Yeah, no. not fully that? entrenched. You just back in work just yet? Yeah. Well, like, you know, when you come back on a Monday, it's one thing. When you come back on a Thursday afternoon, uh, you're yeah. Just oh, like, yeah. Okay. Uh-huh. Yeah, no, yeah. Now, was this so. that climbcation? It's always a climbcation. Yeah. A climbcation. Oh. Yeah, man. I Where'd go, you go? I don't go anywhere you can't climb. <laughs> there you go. I had a buddy say once, he's like, I wouldn't live anywhere I wouldn't go on vacation. <laughs> North, North Dakota's <laughs> not calling your name? Actually, uh, I think it's South Dakota. South North Dakota has really good climbing. Oh, really? Right. Right. Oh, perfect. Yeah. 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 Well, like, actually, all the rock around uh, Mount Rushmore. Yeah, the Black actually, Hills. Like, oh. Yeah, it was really good climbing yeah, yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Wow. Um, but I was in Kentucky on this trip. Well... I made a big loop from like North Carolina to West Virginia to Kentucky. Is that the Appalachians? Appalachians? You know, I was technically in the Appala- Appalachian Mountains. Appalachian, Appalachian yeah. Appalachian. Yeah. Depends yeah. where you're from. Yeah. yeah. A lot of people call our Appalachian cider Appalachian. Appalachian? It's like <laughs> super common. You're like, oh man, I'm not going to say anything, but it definitely says Appalachian. I'll, I'll fill your cup. You know, yeah. speaking about the, um, what'd you say, the president, what is that place called? Mount, Mount Rushmore. Rushmore. Mount Rushmore. Like, Obviously, you can't climb that, right? No. Is it, like, blocked off? Like, you can't get close? It's a I monument. think there are routes, like, literally just outside it. Oh, oh really? I really okay. do. Yeah. Okay, because cool. I thought I saw a picture of, like, someone climbing it with the face, like, Right next there. to her? Yeah. yeah. Oh, and I was that like, would be rad. Yeah. yeah. Like, I kind of was looking into it at one point, I think. Well, I would, during some like Rushmore late. drama, you know, yeah. Yeah. Right. I figured there'd be some rogue dude who's like, I'm gonna go at night. Yeah, yeah. Climb like, go for it. I better <laughs> climb it up <laughs> climb it before they blow it up. Yeah, yeah. No, I think I did some research, and there's like all kinds of cool routes where you're just like looking right next to like the nose of whomever. Oh, yeah. cool. Yeah. yeah. So uh, what's up with Kentucky? Don't quote me though. on that. I might, I might be wrong, listeners. Don't. Yeah, no, yeah, no right? judging. No, no, we're no, wrong no, a lot no here. Yeah. Decided here. Yeah, we like to sound like we know what we're talking about, but probably yeah, it wasn't half a certified time. statement. We have to certify behind it. So. Yeah. Google, it Google it on your own. Yeah. yeah. No, I was wondering about the Kentucky run. So you went out there for vacation, tip uh, in the Appalachian. Appalachian. I don't actually Any know you? technically where those mountains begin, okay. but <laughs> Kentucky has. <laughs> yes. Any climbers like rolling their eyes because they know this, but like Kentucky's oddly enough the like mecca of sport climbing in North America. Really? Really? Yeah. There's all these. Sand. I thought it was like Utah or something. No shit. I mean, yeah. like there's good rock there, but when it comes to like steep overhanging walls, yeah. it's like oh. it's like an outdoor gym where every wall is just meant to be climbed. Yeah. You know, there's these massive hundred plus foot walls that are just pocketed with like the ideal holds, and they're. It's known for an area where it's not like as technical, and you have to like really. It's like just steep and hang on. Okay. Yeah. You know, yeah. big, the biggest hold you'd ever fall off of. You hear that a lot, just okay. because <laughs> the rock just goes forever. <laughs> so all the like hardest, some of the hardest routes in North America are there. Nice. That's pretty, yeah, like oh, a high cool concentration of really hard routes. And you're saying oh. that that sandstone. Yeah, yeah, it's called Coben sandstone. Corbin, Corbin sandstone. Which is really oh. interesting because Kentucky is also famous for their limestone reservoirs, right? They are. For the, the way the geology works is the sandstone sits on top of the limestone. Okay. okay. So you can go caving or like whatever. Yeah. Which is a dumb sport. I've done a lot of it. Um, <laughs> it's like the opposite of climbing. It's <laughs> like climbing without the fun, but you're cold, wet, and muddy. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 I don't mind the bats. Bats are cool, but yes, yeah. yeah, so the limestone sits underneath because limestone is like old, old, old seabed. Uh-huh. And then sandstone is like slightly less seabed. younger. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Okay. yeah. It's a million less. Get years educated old. out here, man. Yeah. Look yeah, at that, man. Educated. Jeez. Uh, one yeah. thing I wanted to bring up about the Alaska Rock Gym here, which maybe a lot of parents don't know, we cater a lot of activities and things for parents to do with their kids. Um, they, you guys have a really awesome, like, I don't know if it's really described like as a climbing school. Um, a youth but program? A youth program, you'd say. Would that, would one, can you detail that a little bit for us? Because I know that my uh, my brother's daughter, Viviana, is in it, and then my son wants to jump in yeah. it. Yeah, Pax um, and Pay are going to get in this fall. We're so h- how does it work? Yeah, man. Um, well, I'll just start by saying, you know, during COVID, we had to make a big pivot. Kids programs have always been a huge part of what we do. Um, but, you know, 20 years ago when no one knew what rock climbing was, you couldn't exactly, like, blow the doors open with kids programs. But 
every year it's gotten bigger and bigger. And then with COVID, it really, the kids programs is what got us through. So our programs for like, yeah, 14 and under have never been more banging. And uh, we, four to, to 18, we have a program for you. Um, I don't know, I guess, what do you want to know? We get kids in, we get them climbing, we meet them where they're at, we make sure they get challenged at a pace and a rate that's appropriate for them. There's like bouldering and then there's all... Yeah, Uh and like we've got a progression now where we got skills cards and we're like teaching them how to heel hook and dyno and you know, you name it. Oh yeah. yeah. And then so for like the younger kids, it's like an hour or two once a week or how? Yeah, yeah, we really try to have schedules that revolve around school and Mm -hmm. whatever else. Right now we're in... being able to bring the kids in. Yeah, Yeah, I mean when... Uh, ASD was changing with COVID. We were like literally on the dime, like, okay, they're moving these kids back in and we we're can do these. moving programs so that those parents can actually still come to them and all yes. that. So we That's operate great. around the ASD schedule. Like we Perfect. all know it like and by the, heart. Yeah. You know? A yeah. lot of the kid parents, you know, that have school going kids in the summertime, they don't have anywhere, anywhere to go. Do you have summer camps? Oh, or? we're in full swing right now. Yeah. Yeah. Three days a week. Um, I'm sure we still have some slots available for later in the summer, but we have a morning and an afternoon session. Wow. It's a hundred bucks. It includes all three days, and the kids just come and wow. just go ham. We do art projects. We do all kinds of stuff at the end. Awesome. Birthday wow. parties, too. We had Mateo's birthday party. You guys still do the birthday parties? Yeah, we're just bringing them back now. You know, that's like we're kind of uh, – the today's post was the showers are fully functional. So it's like oh, the nice. last thing that is any different than pre-COVID. So nice. birthday parties are back. Nice. Wow. Yep, it's all back. Yeah, it's cool. blowing up. And for people that don't know where it is, it's right there, kind of behind Moose's Tooth, yeah. in between Moose's Tooth and Kinley's. More behind Kinley's. It just that parking towers, lot. man, from the Seward Highway. It's such a badass. It's a what's, awesome. the height, what's the height? Man? Four so, stories? Yeah, something? it's four stories. Okay. But then yeah. there's a, it's you when you walk in, the roped area actually sits below okay. ground level. So oh, our roped cool. area floor to ceiling is 50 feet. The walls are around 45 actual feet of climbing. Yeah. yeah. And then, yeah, the building is four stories tall off of the ground level from the exterior that's awesome yeah if you can't you know i always i never want to say this people but i'm like if you can't find the alaska rock gym you know you're not looking <laughs> like, you know it's, it's, it's a giant red right box there. Yeah. You know? it's definitely the tallest building in that area yeah yeah, yeah. it just yeah. sticks out right you know? there do you yeah. guys have uh, like open climb like days or stuff like that or is it all like you got to schedule no or we're you know it's kind of funny to go back to covid you know, adjusting trying to figure out what to do the least popular thing we did was make people schedule when they're going to go climbing. Okay. That's oh, like, and climbers, you know, we're rebellious by nature, uh-huh. right? And right. then also yeah. we're sometimes kind of unorga- unorganized or spontaneous. So spontaneous, yeah. It's like people love just rolling into the rock gym whenever they feel like it. So, yeah. you know, <laughs> when we open at 6 a.m., we close at 10 p.m., you can come. You show up at 9.45, we might go, uh, maybe tomorrow. But otherwise, yeah. you're welcome to walk right in. Yeah. Is there a limit of how many people you guys let in there to climb at a time? You know, I mean, the fire marshal probably wouldn't want us to go past 350 or something oh, like really? that. Oh, really? Okay. But, um, you know, day to day, it's pretty self-regulating. People come in. and yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, I'd say when we're really popping, there's a couple hundred people in the building all spread out throughout. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, it's a really beautiful place. Yeah, I have, I have not been inside. I, I wanted to check it out. I hear nothing but good things about it, though, man. Well, thank you, man. We, yeah. work, we work real hard, you know? We yeah. really do. Yeah, it's, and it's, it's kind of cool with the kids' stuff because, you know, I have a kid that plays hockey, and it's like I feel like that's still something a kid could squeeze in. Yeah. Go oh, in yeah. there for 45 minutes, an hour, once a week. You know what I mean? Totally. They're already doing a practice or some sort of activity five or six days a week, maybe. Yeah. So they can still squeeze that in, right? Like, totally. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, yeah. and in the beginning stages, if you're not climbing all the time, an hour, hour and a half, you're pretty sure. cooked no matter what. Oh, yeah. You know, bet, it's a full man. body kind of experience. Yeah. So yeah. really good complimentary to like leg heavy sports. You know, I, I feel like too, it's got to be great for kids. I know myself personally, I, I kind of deal with uh, a fear of heights. I'll go up 7,000 feet on a mountain and look down a crevasse and I'm good. But if I go 15 feet up on a ladder, I feel a certain way. And I bet that rock gym (laughs) experience would help you kind of shake some of that, right? It's it's enclosed climbing type. You know, right? Like, I mean, it's a controlled environment, really, at the end of the day, right? We've tried to take the climbing experience and reduce down all the variables that make real climbing a bit more of a risky activity. Okay. And I speak from personal experience. The reason I got obsessed with climbing is nothing ever scared me more. You know, I'd bungee jump, Uh. roller coaster. I'd walk (laughs) to the edge of the Grand Canyon. No problem. Yep. I got 10 feet up on the slab that the birthday party party kids just run laps on, you know? Yeah. And I was gripped out of my mind. Yeah, yeah. 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 And so someone was like, okay, I got to lean into this because... So I personally went from being like terrified to like a rope access carpenter who's addicted to being like up high and exposed, wow. you know? Yeah. Yeah. So Great story, man. Thanks for sharing that. Cause it, 
can hold a kid back or a person back from experiencing stuff in life that they're just like, yeah, yeah. you know, like, and, get and I'll it. say the one time we went, man, the staff is amazing over there. Um, they really prep the kids on how to fall and how to climb and, you know, from adults too. And like, when you go to the birthday party, you have a, like, I want to say one or two set people that are actually helping the mm-hmm. kids and they're mm-hmm. actually teaching. They're not like, Hey, just climb. And if you fall, roll back like this, they're actually just telling you lingo and, and how to tie this stuff and how to fall back and what to do. And the, and the verbiage, right. You know, just Grip like any stuff. sport, there's like its own words. Yeah. And you're like, what does belay mean? Yeah. What does this mean? Mm-hmm. You know? And so they like give them the full rundown and it was just a great experience and it makes the kids want to go back, you know? Yeah. Well, thank you, man. That's really good to like get the outsider's perspective. You know, we work really hard at making sure it's inclusive and that people feel like, hey, this is a culture that you get to be a part of if you want. Yeah. Yeah. When, yeah. when the kids were three, uh, we used to have so there's a popular ballet dance studio on the street across yep. the street. So as a dad, you know, the bo- I was like, hey, you know, son, do you want to go with your twin sister to go to ballet? And he is just wasn't interested which is okay yeah and so i was like well there's this rock gym across the street but he was three <laughs> not four and that's yep. when the program start and it was really cool to walk in the first day kind of blind mm-hmm. and uh, the staff was so awesome kind of streamlined us through the process and then i could bring him up myself and do bouldering mm-hmm. upstairs as three yep. and so he got he got to learn like hey these are some holds and this is what i do and it's okay to fall and all those things and and kind of like the um the etiquette with the other kids running mm-hmm. around and totally. like self-discipline. And so it was really good as a three-year-old to have your boy, three-year-old boys are psychos and <laughs> to learn yeah. this stuff there, yeah. it, but you can do it on a whim. Like what you're saying, yep. like yep. I, I didn't have to go every kind of Wednesday. I could just go whatever yeah. I wanted. Yep. Like this kid's got a lot of energy. Let's go. Yeah. yeah. Get it yeah. out We're of going rock yeah. gym Dude. now. And then it's going to be yeah. nap time. <laughs> and it's cool watching kids because when they get it, I mean, it's, so much more natural than when we have to relearn some oh, of those sure, movement patterns. Sure. You watch some of these kids do moves and you're like, that's incredible. You know, mm-hmm. you just, like, your body just intuits exactly what the physics of the situation yeah. are. That's badass. Yeah, yeah, you know, and then, like, we have to go relearn it as adults when we've been sitting in chairs. Yeah, you know, we haven't been going to yoga harder. every day. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. yeah, totally. Yeah. Yeah, oh yeah I mean, gosh. you know, we always have these competitions and there's always a youth component to the competition. Mm. And everyone knows that the like adult routes are going to be hard, but I'll be down on the floor after we leave the routes up, and people can who didn't compete get to have that experience on their own. Oh, okay. Just yeah, to see. yeah, because yeah. comp routes are always like super weird. You know, you yeah. hang upside down, or they're long, or they're beautiful. You know, we try to make them really stand out. And so then their youth routes are labeled. You know, it'll be like tykes or whatever. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. And then the people the members are just like, man, these kids routes. And I'm like, the kids climb harder than we do. You know, like you think it's got this little kid name title on it. And you're like, no, that's like 12 plus, you know, it's yeah. like a really hard route that, you know, none of us are going to do. Right. But these kids are crushing. Yeah. So. Little spiders. Oh, there. Awesome. They can just yeah. crawl all over everything. Oh yeah. Totally. That's the, so badass. The, another thing I noticed when I was there was you guys have a lot of like color coding going on. Maybe is that like the difficulty of the routes? Yep. Yeah. Okay. There's been a whole evolution of the indoor industry. We used to just like the holds were all different colors and you'd put tape. Okay. All, like, oh, I spent hours routes? of my life just like taping holds pink <laughs> so that you know what holds to grab. Yeah. You know, like literally hurt my thumb from just pressing all day. Um, so yeah, eventually they were like, hey, if we standardize the colors and then you just buy a bunch of every color, then you go up like, all right, I got to set a blue route because you're setting pink. So I'm, yeah. you know, I'm over here. There you go. Yeah. And in the, in the beginning, I like to say climbing is this really awesome sport, but it's a bunch of arbitrary rules that we made up. So you get to make up your own rules at any point yeah. in the game. So in the beginning, it's like, get to the top, grab whatever Whatever holds you want doesn't okay. matter. Climb the rainbow, yeah. But then eventually you're going to be like, okay, what am I capable of? Well, then you got to start reducing your options, mm. and that's where the color coordinating comes in. Got mm. it. This blue route is a little easier, say, than this pink route, and there'll be a label with a grade at the base of the route. And Are then, those interchangeable? Like you can make new routes? Yep. Yeah. Okay. We have about a six-week cycle, so if you come back every six weeks, almost all the routes oh. would be new. So they're constantly oh, the right setters on. are moving around the facility, trying to make sure everything's like. You know, and something's been up for a while, and there's like eight months of skin and shoe rubber, and you, you know, <laughs> yeah. that's that's gross. So yeah. we're constantly <laughs> taking them down, cleaning them, mm. okay. and then if you're climbing yeah. a couple of days a week, you know, you start climbing all the routes within your ability level pretty quickly, and so yeah, yeah, you know, people don't like hearing this, but it's a product to be consumed, and you know, our job is to make sure that the spread of routes are the appropriate grade for the people who climb there. You know, if we don't have kid-friendly routes. 
why have kids programs? You know? Yeah. 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 No, and we have really good climbers. So we have to have really hard routes so that they have something that to challenge them too. Sure. So we're constantly just all trying, over the board. I mean, trying to make sure that we know what people want and then we're giving it to them. Yeah. yeah. Right on. In yeah. tune, in tune with your consumer. I love that. Well, yeah. you know, it's kind of you an really interesting are. thing. It's hard. We do a lot. You know, we've, we've tried apps for people to use to like grade stuff. We try like spreadsheets and like rate this route. You know, we put a new route up. Tell us how many stars you think it is. Tell us how hard you think it is. So uh, that get their commentary and yeah. their feedback and everything. Yeah, yeah. yeah mm-hmm. try. You know, yeah, it's kind right of on. interesting. Try model. to sift through and figure out what what helps and what doesn't. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. That's the one thing is do it all in a way that limits the the trolls from being able to like, and they yeah. still do. Yeah. You know, people uh, always sure. like. Haters we'll give people everywhere. like a three grade spread of what you think this route might be, and some strong person will always like write five two. You know, some real you know. Yeah, yeah, really yeah. easy grade on it. Yeah. Like, yeah. Okay, cool, man. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, thanks for coming out, Eric, and yeah, giving man. us the rundown. Dude. And any families out there that are looking to get into some new activity with their kids, I mean, the Rock Gym is awesome. Obviously, they're open at any time. You can go anytime. You can sign up for classes or not. Um, the Instagram handle was uh, Alaska Rock Gym. Alaska Rock Gym, and it's alaskarockgym.com too for the website. Right on, Eric. Eric um, I want to ask a quick question yeah. on Eric, though. He's going to shake your hand. Oh, yeah. Daniel, yeah. Sorry about Thanks, that, guys. Man. No, you're good. Didn't mean to make that awkward. I was just going to ask you if they're <laughs> looking for you, Eric. What's your What's your quick role on Rock Gym? You are the. I am the operations manager. Okay. Yeah. So if they yep. need like anything, all things Rock Gym, you can ask for Eric. Pretty much, man. Got a I'm badass a badass management crew and team too, and we do. So yeah, right yeah. On. We've got okay. everyone who is supposed to be in the right place. You know. Okay. Cool. Um, but yeah. yeah, if you start with asking for Eric, everybody knows who I am. All right. right. Point you to the start. right. Point you to the right person. Right Sounds on. good, man. All right. Thank All right. you, gentlemen. Thanks, Thanks Eric. Eric. It was really nice to meet you, man. All right. You too. Yep. Thanks, right on. Uh, really quick, a shout out to the Treehouse AK, your one-stop dispensary located at 341 Boniface Parkway. Be sure to ask the bud tender about their deal of the day because honestly, there's always something good on deck. And guys, listen, this is where the culture lives. At the Treehouse, their dedication to servicing consumers has been developed through a lifetime of involvement in the cannabis culture. They've committed to providing the highest quality products at whatever value your budget affords while always maintaining the deep-rooted principles that have carried them this far. Their focus is on relationships over transactions and you can always depend on them to treat you with the respect you deserve hit them up at the treehouseak.com remember you must be 21 years of age to enter their store the culture lives the culture lives yeah. jackie so jackie's got some uh, ceviche that you did up there yeah, yeah this, is, this right here is uh, peruvian here. to alaska culture yeah this uh ceviche. oh you did per- peruvian style yeah what does sure. that mean well i i think i think ceviche in general came from peru and uh, re- <laughs> no, my my Colombian parents go. would say elsewhere, but oh, I don't okay. know. Well, well, they so, probably have their own style. Yeah, may, maybe it's Colum- definitely South American. So th- this one is uh, halibut that I caught last week on the boat in Prince William Sound. Was that the 134 pounder? 134 Hoss? pounder Ooh. on a drift after uh, anchored up, seeing nothing. Had the water in the right direction, the tide in the right direction. Just didn't see anything, even with a chum bag down there, and then looked at the topo. And it uh, looked like there's some nice little hiding spots off a cliff, so uh, some rocky structure, and pulled the anchor and let it float in about 10 minutes in, and just pulled, that. pulled in a barn door. <laughs> Bad boy went back down. Uh, Why well, do they call it a barn door? I, I hear the, that a lot. the current like a barn door would. A pounder is a certain length and width in general, so by measurement, I've always thought, like, is the 100-pound halibut equivalent to, like, the 50 pound king or the what's what's the rainbow number 28 inch like what's like the no. you know I, I, am i wrong in that i i feel like that's what when you catch a 100 pounder it's like catching a trophy fish whatever size well, 100 pound it. yeah that's that's i mean it's a big a fish and and what's great about 100 pounders okay there's okay this is arguably right maybe it's not arguably they say anything over 100 pounds is typically a breeding female yeah. right and so there's the controversy on that but i would say in all the 100 plus pound fish i've been part of and or caught i harvested the the meat was delicious it was wonderful and the fight and and the the sport side of catching the fish people oh they just pull right up no they don't they Uh, fight like a son of a gun they're awesome so yeah this one ran back down five times it was a big fight i don't keep a lot of big fish i probably keep one or two big fish a Mm -hmm. year um and all this fish went to, um, you know, our group of, you know, our close family and friends. And sure. So all, all the fish is already distributed. And the 100 um, pounds goes a long way, too. Oh, man. yeah, it does. You yeah. Know? 
And I don't know. Hundred pounds of meat, hundred pounds. You know, you don't just you don't catch as many fish in Prince William Sound. You seem to the resident fish seem to be bigger, um, which is just mm. kind of interesting because it. You know, I've always just heard about, about like the breeding female like, thing as well. Yeah. You yeah, I'm not an Probably expert not in, in camera, it, but it's kind of interesting when I am in the sound and most of the fish are 100 pounds, uh, where, like, you get out into the open ocean and then you're catching a lot more of the smaller fish. Mm -hmm. uh, but what I have found is that the fish are where I where I like to fish in the sound seem to be less wormy, and there's definitely less gray meat. So I feel like with this 134 pounder uh, almost all the meat was usable yeah you know i, I didn't have to toss Big, anything slabs, yeah. anything aside which was really great big beautiful cheeks yeah and it went a long ways i mean it fed just this uh, it's i took out man. 10 pounds and made uh, 10 pounds of ceviche last night so this is uh we i soaked it in lime juice overnight Oops. with uh the Trader Joe's chili lime seasoning mm. in there, which is like my Trader little Joe's twist stuff. to it. And then cilantro, red onion, and tomatoes. That's it. And that's all you need. And it's just, it's a, you know, Well, delicious. and it's, it's as least fishy tasting and fresh as it could be, too. It's, it's really good. Yeah. And the, and the more it marinates in that sauce, like even tomorrow <laughs> or the next day, it's still, it's going to just absorb more of that flavor. Oh, it's so oh, good. Like a couple days later. Okay. Let it all just kind of marinate. Yeah. 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 Uh, I want to welcome in uh, Jordan from uh, Outgoing Angling. You might want to scoot up. That thing's a little bit uh, squirrely on that side there. Yeah. You, you maybe get a shim under there? Yeah. Right. Uh, a little history on uh, Jordan. Jordan is Katie, uh, the marketing guru of Double Shovel's uh, boyfriend, Better girlfriend half. there. Yeah. Um, that is a badass jacket. I got to say that for sure. Uh, thanks for coming out, Jordan. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, guys. Thanks for having me. Turn them up. There we go. Yeah, there you go. Now we can hear you. Uh, tell us about Outgoing Angling. This is like a new venture you're doing? Yeah, so I have um, I've operated in the Florida Keys for 10 years under Outgoing Angling um, and have been uh, real busy with all that stuff. And what and, are you doing down there? What are you catching down and, there? And so we are mostly fly fishing, open to any fishing, but uh, typically fly fishing for tarpon, bonefish, and permit on... Uh, on the flats and backcountry near Key West, and I I am originally from Florida, and uh, and am very passionate about that fishing and fishery, and um, and so I've guided up here in Alaska for uh, this will be 15 years, mm. and um, I've always worked for someone else, uh, some other lodge, some other entity like that, and so. Um, outgoing angling in Alaska is now me operating for myself in Alaska in addition to operating for myself in Florida mm. and um, yeah basically it's gonna help out with uh, everything with my uh, career and lifestyle and all that good stuff girlfriend relationship all that uh, it's gonna help out for me not to be uh, 300 miles away in someone else's cabin taking someone else's clients and uh, working for someone else yeah. someone else's direct benefit and uh, and uh, reputation and all that good stuff yeah yeah mm. what are you gonna specialize in up here um, so I'm really passionate about uh, fishing for steelhead and also passionate about fishing for trout and uh, the salmon thing too, but uh, I'd say steelhead are my favorite. And um, so I will do a lot of steelhead charters, a lot of rainbow trout charters in the fall. Um, also really big into king salmon fishing, specifically on fly rods. And so, uh, yeah, basically I'll specialize in whatever anyone wants to pay me to do. <laughs> uh, but, uh, you know, like I said, most passionate about fly fishing for steelhead and, yeah. and for king salmon. The fly fishing for king salmon doesn't necessarily pay the bills. It's going to be something more that I enjoy doing. Yeah, yeah. you're passionate time. about. Yeah, you love it. Are you uh, targeting any certain rivers or creeks um, for the trout and stuff, or are you kind of open to where wherever the client wants to go? Yeah, so I'm, I'm trying to stay really flexible. You kind of have to pick somewhere to be based out of, and that, of course, is the big uh, fishery of the Kenai Peninsula. Yeah. Right, that's where... That's where the people uh, are lined up to hire a guide, and so that's where it just uh, works out for me to fit in as a new guide uh, or new outfitter in the area. And so, uh, yeah, definitely have to pick a home base, maybe 
maybe the Kenai, close to the Kenai, Kenai Peninsula, what, whatever it is. But I'd like to be able to stay flexible and be statewide, uh, especially this time of year. Um, like a, back to the King Salmon thing, do King trips to the Matsu Valley and do King trips on the Copper River uh, Valley tributaries. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, staying flexible. We're also going to offer a bunch of different uh, fairly exotic fly out uh, flyouts out of Anchorage or out of the peninsula, including uh, day trips to Bristol Bay to see some of the more um, fabled uh, Bristol Bay rivers and streams, uh, basically just for the day. That would nice. be awesome. Mm -hmm. That yeah. sounds amazing. So out, Outgoing Angling is the, is the uh, Instagram, and what's the website again? It's also outgoingangling.com. Outgoing yep. nice. nice. What's the seasons in Florida? Do they contrast so you can be here and then six months there? No, basically they fit uh, perfectly together to where um, just as the, the weather gets too poor to fish here, say in the late fall, early winter, that's really when um, the tourist season more or less starts in South Florida. And the mm. fishing in Florida is not necessarily restricted by weather. It's uh, basically year-round fishery, but um, the guys that live there year-round um, kind of starve in the summertime. It's not that the fishing isn't good and that you can't go out and fish, but it's that people's interests more shift to being places like Alaska or, yeah. or going to Montana to fish in the summertime. The fishing in Florida is great in the summertime. The heat is extreme huh? pretty extreme yeah mm -hmm. but, but humidity the, yeah right but it, the fishing stays consistent and so it's it's such that people just aren't that interested in going to florida in the summertime it's more uh rocky mountain region canada alaska places like that yeah. that fit more into are you a one-man op or you got other guys helping you out yeah really i'm just a one-man deal um have been in florida uh, just all on my own, um, always been on my own, never really worked for anyone. Um, and as I'm getting started here in, uh, in Anchorage and on the peninsula, I, you know, instead of working for someone, um, you know, possess the capacity to operate my own business and have so have done so for quite some time. And so just made more sense instead of working for someone to just start my own deal yeah. and you can still subcontract for other outfitters and oh, lodges okay. and other mm -hmm. guides Got uh, it. but uh just worked out better for me to start my own deal it's yeah. not too difficult business license and a couple other things and you're uh, you're an outfitter yeah, that, yeah that was my next question what what was the hurdles and hoops to uh become licensed down there yeah it's it's actually really tough to become licensed on the kenai river there's a pretty big weed out process for that you have to uh you have to take a week-long course um, and test out of the rules and regulations surrounding the Kenai specifically. Um, in addition to being a licensed U.S. Uh, Coast Guard captain, which is just Whoa. about the same week-long course with a big exam and a, and a bunch of other uh, hoops and paperwork. And uh, yeah, so it's it's really pretty tough. You you have to report to several different uh, agencies, both state and federal level. Um, state parks is a big one that you have to provide them with a ton of information and paperwork and licenses and insurance. And yeah, mm -hmm. right. And, and, you know, most of all of the, the uh, boat ramps and public land on the Kenai are operated by state parks. So that's a big entity you have to report to. Um, but also there is uh, the Chugach uh, National Forest, which is the upper upper Kenai and then uh, everything surrounding and just below Skelac Lake is uh, is operated by um, the Kenai National Wildlife Re Refuge which is uh, within the division of uh, fish and wildlife federal, right? right yeah, yeah it's all federal so so uh, in a, you know in addition to your state stuff you have to have a couple different federal permits as well and uh, you know then you go and fish on the Kasilof and that's a whole different yeah. Uh, the whole different uh, deal with being in that different yeah, that area, mm -hmm. right? And so then you've got to have your your different federal permits and and stuff for wow. for that drainage as well. Well, and Jordan, you just took your test, right? Or yeah. passed it, yep. or 
Yep. Like just in the last day or two, didn't yeah. you? Yeah. Yes. Wow. Correct. So you officially passed it. Yep. Congratulations. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Katie had mentioned the other night. Was it? We came down here. Was it Thursday? Yeah. Thursday. Yeah, Thursday night. I think you were taking it Friday. Did you just take it Friday or Thursday or what? Yeah. What? It was uh, yesterday morning. It was okay. <laughs> that's right. She mentioned it. Yeah. Well, congratulations. Yeah. Man. That must have been a good. Or get a lot of weight lifted off your shoulders. Right. Like get that thing done. One of the things checked off the list. Yeah. For sure. yeah. Is, is it just like multiple <laughs> choice? It is. It's multiple choice. And the trouble that I ran into is that traditionally you take the week long course and uh, you test on that Friday, uh, you know, kind of capping off the week. And, Fresh from the class. Right. And so given the uh, pandemic and everything else, we had the course over zoom in february oh, oh wow. and here i am taking the exam on uh in the middle of june and so there wasn't really any sort of refreshing uh class or anything like that so wow. i basically i took the course in february and then i just took the course this past week again on my own to uh be like a refresher to, right yeah. exactly got it yeah. is there a book that comes along with that yeah no book um it's all different uh, presentations basically it's a group of powerpoints given by um, by different people that are a uh, spokesperson for the different uh, entities involved like the state parks had a few different people that uh, present and provide information federal level and then uh, some of the different user groups like the Kenai River Sport Fish Association is like mm -hmm. the big Big boys, uh, yeah. Yeah, it goes between kind of the public use and the guide use to uh, to provide some, uh, um, you know, uh, conflict resolution. Mm -hmm. um, and so, uh, yeah, a bunch of different uh, people from different parts of the uh, of the area down there presented on on different uh, parts that they kind of pertain to, and then all of that is lumped into to a big. Uh, uh, PDF file that I was able to, to, look, to at. look over. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, I think I was telling you earlier. One of my sons, one of his dreams is to go um, fly fishing in Florida. He really wants to. I mean, he's only ten, but uh -huh. the, he loves trout fishing. He knows he already wants to be a guide. Yep. He already he has, has his that. eye on Florida. He already has his list of fish that he wants to catch uh -huh. in his life. Um, so if, what's like the best time? to do that because i definitely want to book something where me and him go down to florida and come do a trip with you what's the um what's the outlay should we book for a week three days where do we go what's the whole process yeah it just it just depends usually there's the ultimate variable involved which is weather yeah so the longer that you're there for and within the different mm. seasons uh you comes fish. comes weather yeah so so the the further you are away from midwinter the more stable the weather is going to be and uh and with that it, it kind of any time of year you run into you know unfavorable weather for the fishing down there yeah and so uh you know three days is better than two four days is better than three days got it uh, you don't necessarily need to be there for the week uh, but the longer the, that you're there, the more you ensure that you're going to have favorable conditions for, for yeah. sight fishing. Or so. multiple days to fish. Yeah. Where you want to well, say, I want to yeah. at least fish two of five days. Like Got it. Five days would give you an opportunity, you think, with, with yeah. weather? Yeah. Yeah. You know? Usually, usually it does. Um, and that, too, just depends. You know, it's kind of just uh, throwing a dart at the dartboard as far as weather goes. Because, yeah. you know, the, yeah. the portions of the season that I sell have, you know, that might have the most consistent weather you know there's still a tropical storm that'll come through or there's still <laughs> yeah. rain and yeah. clouds and and uh, you know florida in saltwater fishing fly fishing specifically is all sight fishing and so you've got to have light wind is preferable but you must have sun so anytime oh, yeah, so you can see. And right you can see, yeah. so yeah it it takes the sun in order to see any of these fish and you've got to see them before you can catch them especially on a fly rod mm -hmm. um so basically you know a beautiful day for someone just walking around florida isn't necessarily a great day for someone trying to catch a tarpon on a fly mm -hmm. in key west uh you know clouds for half of the day 
really, I mean, there, there went your, your opportunities for sight fishing for, for half the day. And so it is, you know, it's, it's usually pretty sunny down there. Um, but even in, you know, uh, the times of year where the weather is good and the weather is stable, clouds are one of the bigger enemies that the flats fishing guides have as far as being able to sight fish challenges. stuff. Big yeah, challenges. Yeah, right. And it is, it's just a challenging fishery, even mm-hmm. in perfect conditions. It's a uh, very, um, it's just difficult. You probably love it though. Oh yeah, it's yeah, it's intense. Yeah, there is yeah. there is nothing like uh, sight fishing any fish in any location. Just very true. seeing the fish uh, before you catch them and seeing the fish as they're eating your fly yeah. or whatever it is that you're throwing at them is just super exciting and exciting. Yeah, right. Yeah. What's your What's your favorite? If you had one, you can only do forever. Uh, I like permit fishing. Permit. Yeah, that's a that's the hardest fish to catch on fly that there is. Yeah, one of the harder fish to like catch. A finicky doesn't want to very, bite. Yeah, or just gotta get it in the right attitude and mindset. To they're they're just very intelligent. Their eyes are bigger than ours. Like a uh, 10, 12 pound fish has eyes that are as large or larger than a human eye, and their eyes are on opposing sides of their face almost perfectly and so they're looking in both directions and they can see 360 degrees without Mm -hmm. without uh turning and so uh that you know mixed with their intelligence level makes them incredibly hard to catch because they are very aware of their surroundings they're very aware of what is a real crab or shrimp and what is not and they they're just incredibly spooky yeah what's the different is the rooster fish related to the permit? They actually are. They are, they are distantly related in that they are both in the jack family. Oh, they're oh, jack. Yeah, so okay. they're, they are both in the jack family. They don't look anything alike. Uh-huh. Their their skin and 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 shape is similar, um, but they are both actually yes, they are both in the jack family. Okay, mm-hmm. that's pretty cool. And, and we don't have rooster fish in the Atlantic or Caribbean. They're Pacific. just on the uh, right, exactly, right. South okay. Pacific. Yeah. yeah, you always hear Alaskans going down there, too, into Mexico to go catch and, roosters and that's from the a, beach. Yeah. That's a trip that I'm looking forward to taking yeah. someday. I'll take sure. that with you if you want to go. I've always <laughs> right, wanted to do deal. that. Run up and down. You know, if we go hike some of these mountains first, yeah. run up and down the beach as fast as you have to for those roosters. Yeah. So, so switching gears on the Alaska side of things, Jordan, so where are clients going to best – locate you outside of just the outgoing angling umbrella like you got your third-party contracting for some other places um, we had mentioned we had talked earlier so how can someone get with you to get on a charter to get going like how, how are they finding you up here how, what's the what's the best way well so i've kind of relied on um i don't have a great answer for that i've kind of relied on a lot of my bookings are um, clients that I've had for even like mm. six, eight years okay. in Florida. And a lot of those people I've actually, you know, through guiding up here for lodges, a lot of people that I fish in Florida every year or however often, um, I've actually got from starting our relationship up here in Alaska. So they're at a following lodge. you up here and you're getting your bookings right. off of that. Right. And okay. so I've, I've, I've taken a lot of people from up here, brought them south. Mm. And they've, you know, remained my client for now maybe almost 10 years. And so they've uh, switched what they're doing up here to then be able to fish with me back in the state of Alaska as well. Wow, nice. that's cool, man. Yeah. Well, follow. before we uh, let you go back to the booth, I had a question. What is that huge reel that you got over there? What's that for? What size is that thing? Uh, a couple of them over there are like 12 weight reels. Okay. And so um, those are all on spay rods, which is another thing I'm specifically passionate about is spay fishing, uh, especially for, like I said, king salmon and, and steelhead. What does that mean for people that don't know? And so instead of, instead of doing an overhead uh, false cast, uh, back cast, and forward, uh, forward cast with a fly rod, you're essentially using a much longer, heavier rod, and you're, you're avoiding doing a back cast by making a very large, long roll cast out in front of you. Mm. And so it's very useful for standing in front of trees, 
standing in front of a rock wall or something like that to where you don't have the ability to make your big bat cast to cast far out into the river. You're essentially manipulating the line um, in front of you only or, or upstream or downstream of you and sending it out into the river that way. In a side-to-side -side motion? Yeah, it's, it's essentially any different motion that you can make uh, to to get the line in shape to make a roll cast. Got it. So so you're you're basically with a high rod tip, you're you're flipping or rolling the line straight out in front of you without having to pull it off the water and send it behind you. Yeah, you um, use the strength of the rod and the weight of the right, line, and, it, and, and then any water tension. Right. In exactly. The, the 180 degree plane away from the bank. Right. Mm -hmm to exactly create right. that potential energy and send it out in front of you or upstream or wherever. Yeah. It's really fun and cool. Yeah, must take a lot of practice too, just like, I mean, regular fly fishing too. And you can and cast farther too. It's one less stroke too, right? Right. Like, so it's right. Uh, not as strenuous over it hours and hours of People that waters, have right? shoulder issues often switch to spay fishing yep. just yep. because it it oh. doesn't it doesn't have that doesn't strain wear on your, you out all day right it does yeah. not it's a very efficient means of fishing and uh and casting sounds right up my alley sounds like an old man's <laughs> yeah, right up my say. alley there yeah <laughs> and, and uh tennis elbow torn rotator cuff <laughs> right. yeah let's spay get fishing on that. is your game <laughs> and, uh, and given that your rods are much longer and and heavier you need to accompany that with a much bigger reel where the big giant reel over there is coming from. And what's nice is that I've got all of the big giant oversized stuff for the saltwater fishing, specifically the tarpon fishing. Mm. And so I'm able to bring and use a lot of gear kind of overlapping between here and Florida. Nice. Where not so much the 12 weight. Right. Not yep. so much the 12 weight rods, but at least I can use the reels in both locations. So are, are you using cool. sinking line down there? Or? Uh, no, it's all floating. Oh, it is. Okay. It is. It's all floating. We're basically fishing three to five feet of water, maybe a little bit shallower at times for, uh -huh. say, bonefish or permit. But, uh, yeah, typically it's three to five feet. And uh, very, very rarely do I use anything other than a full floating line. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Weighted so similar fly. to Alaska. Yeah, right? Yeah, Weighted fly water, and floating water. line. Yeah. So in, uh, you know, July, June, late June, um, July pre-beads in Alaska, what's your mindset? What are you thinking about as you show up on that on a certain day for, uh, for trout? Uh, it's typically a streamer game. Um, just depending on the, just depending on the, uh, season, uh, as far as like that specific year, you know, when the salmon hatched is, is pretty big and important. Um, that's kind of, um, that's kind of setting the the standard for like the size of the fly that you're using. If the salmon just hatched, you're using maybe a fry pattern. Mm -hmm. um, if it's you know late June, they grow pretty quick, so they go from the size of your fingernail to the size of your finger here within like a month, essentially. Right. Um, and so uh, the sooner the se sooner into the season, uh, earlier into the season, you're using smaller stuff, maybe fingernail, two fingernails, and then by yeah, uh, end of June, potentially July, you're using something more the size of, of one of your fingers as far as a baby salmon goes. But uh, sculpin are always in the river, uh, regardless of season. That's one of the big prey items of, of rainbows. Yep. Um, leech patterns are really good. Yep. When I fished on the Kenai last week um, during the opener, it was it was almost all leeches that I used, and it was really like egg sucking leech, like a purple traditional one. Yeah, or? I'm I'm more. I'll use purple sometimes, and I like purple, but when it comes to smart resident fish, I use something that's like buggier, uh, maybe more natural looking, where the the uh, bead in front of the leech is, is a little more natural looking, a little less kind of fluorescent. But, okay. Uh, uh, and then the rest of the, the fly, I really like to use natural pine squirrel for my leech patterns. It's okay. really kind of like a natural looking... Uh, colorway, uh, black, olive, stuff like that. Right. Is, nice, man. Is, yeah, is pretty... Breaking it down. I like it. Yeah. 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 Right on. <clears throat> I appreciate you sharing not, not acting like it's so top secret. Like you're... Nah. Hey, man, this is what I use. Good luck, right? Yeah. 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 Right. <laughs> That's I love awesome. that a lot. 
Well, thanks coming to talk to us, Jordan. And once yeah, again, man. it's uh, the Instagram is outgoing underscore angling and outgoingangling.com. Yep. That's it. And yeah. uh, if you want to get in on some of that tarpon or any of these trips up here, I'd, I'd get on it quick because yeah. yeah. I know Mateo and I are going to be looking into doing something like that. Yeah. And Jordan, you're doing one corner to the other. Just back, yeah. Back. Are you <laughs> still doing Louisiana too? No, no more Louisiana. Okay, no more redfish. Okay. No, I... Uh, I've had enough of living by myself in a trailer in southern Louisiana. <laughs> okay. where, good where, food, but not yeah, good right. fun. <laughs> good food, and, and I'll be uh, pretty busy up here right up until the end of the, the season into October, uh, towards the end of October, and so I'll, I'll be pretty fished out by that point. No need to, to take it to, to Louisiana. Yeah. yeah. We'll catch them up here in Florida. That's right. Right on. Jordan. Thanks, Jordan. Yeah, thank you guys. Appreciate Thanks for coming it. on, man. Yeah. You got good sound or what? No, I just realized that I, again, forgot to turn that stupid thing on. Oh, I... I the top, so I... So, it w I mean, oh, we're all good, but... That, like, so now when I, go to, when I go to sync them up, I have some, yeah, yeah. some you know, a couple of okay. a couple of things to get off it. Put the fresh battery in and we didn't turn it on? Yeah, yeah, real smart <laughs> move. <laughs> and, then, and then last time it was I accidentally hit the switch and turned it on and killed the battery. Yeah. yeah. Hey, technical <laughs> difficulties, guys. We're, 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 we're new still, to this. We're learning. We're still learning you know. our gear here. <laughs> And um, our second mobile trip, dude. Our second mobile trip yeah. in a row, man. Right on. I mean, set up, set up went pretty well this round, though. It did. It in did. In a rainstorm. It did. It <laughs> did. I'm going to give a quick shout out to uh, Taylor Restoration, 24-hour emergency services, helping Alaskans restore their dreams since 1972. Services include fire, water, mold damage, post-emergency cleaning, remodeling, and the aftermath including burst pipes, overflowing toilets, down trees, fires, pet accidents, and vandalism. Tailored has an emergency response number with trained professionals available to help you at any time, day or night. Give them a call in Anchorage at 344-1239. Eagle River is 373-1239 or hit them up at tailoredrestorationalaska.com. Uh, boys, why don't you say we take a quick little break? I like um, it. Stop back, and we'll come back on the recording and get some of these other people interviewed. Let's do it. And uh, it'll be yeah. a seamless transition here. I like it. Sounds good. All right, let's do it. Pause. All right, we back on, guys. Back on. Dude's Day Part 2. Game on. Game on. <laughs> Second period. Well, Actually, might go on in the third period yeah. now. Yeah, I was Second saying. period was a couple ciders going down, a couple of caribou calls. A few intermissions there. Some ceviche. Some yeah. ceviche, some homemade ceviche. Um, so coming up here, uh, for the people that are watching live and the people that are listening, uh, we're going to have Shaggy from Set Shaggy Sauce. We're going to have the Hordy Marmot Girls coming out. Uh, AK Coffee Company, Mountain View Sports. And uh, what's homie's right here name? Oh, I forget. Um, I don't know, man, but he's got a lot of cool art. Last, um, I wanted to make sure. Dave looks like he's starting to pack up. I would like to try to get him Oh, yeah, we should, get, in, we should get him so from Full so Curl Naomi's real quick. So Naomi's coming over from hoarding first. Let's get Full Curl real quick right now. See if he wants oh, to come she's, over. She's going to come over in any minute. So let, okay. let Naomi come, and then we'll get Dave on. I'll have Reno go grab Dave. All right. He knows we're going to wait for him? Yeah. All right. Yeah. I'm going to go run over there real quick. You guys go ahead real quick. Here she comes. All right. She's coming. Ready to rock. Well, she made a uh, U-turn. Oh. She got nervous. Oh, uh, here she okay, goes. Okay, here now she comes. I had to give her the wave over. over. All right. The hard wave over she there. The wave. All right. I just had some of that Johnny's Kitchen. I had one of those burgers, the MTV burger. The thing is bomb. Oh, Johnny's. Is yeah, good. Johnny's Kitchen out here, man. I had whatever those wings were. He said they're buttermilk something, something. Oh, my goodness. Hello. Hi there. You might have to scoot a little bit forward because okay. that uh, that thing wants to get twisty back up there. There we go. Yeah. Naomi, you made it. Yeah. All right. Thanks for coming over. Yeah, of course. Thank you for having yeah. me. Just Welcome. try to keep this thing as close to your mouth as possible so that we can hear you real out. good. Uh, so Naomi's here from the Horty Marmot. Uh, people that don't know, the Horty Marmot is located on Northern Lights. It is across the street from the old REI building. Mm -hmm. um, it's across the street from Middleway Cafe, Alaska Club West. Uh, the Horty Marmot does, um, what's the word? It's outdoor technical gear consignment. So we sell, um, mm -hmm. uh, help people sell used their used gear from mountaineering to skiing to backpacking, camping, apparel, and kind of everything in between. Yes, and I have uh, some really good experiences with them. I have sold a tent with them. I have sold a backpack. I've sold a couple of jackets. 
and uh, always the customer service is on point. Uh, you get your money back. They call you when it's sold. They let you know how it works, whatever the percentage is that you're going to get. And they let you know up front, hey, if this thing's sitting around for six months, you know, we're going to lower the price and try to sell it. Is that about right? Yep, pretty much. Um, we typically don't actually call when things sell. We have enough business and we sell enough things that it would be overwhelming for us to be able to do that. Um, so it's kind of a check-in with us kind of basis. We take probably about 75% of our phone calls are just people checking in, um, trying to look at their gear and see what's sold. And then we also have a website where people can have an account and just check in as their stuff sells. Um, and then they'll give us a call and we can do PayPal or Venmo or check and cash them out whenever. Or you can come in the store and use it as store credit. Um, we do sell things at different percentages based on how much it's selling for. So you get more money the higher value item it is. So if you're selling a kayak, you'll get closer to 80% um, of the sale versus some apparel, which you might only get 50. Mm. What is the Hoarding Marmot's uh, Instagram? Um, I think it's just the Hoarding Marmot. The Hoarding Marmot? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've actually um, had a lot of success shopping at the Hoarding Marmot uh, once I you know, ran into it. Pretty much, I've always come out of there with something, even if it's just a sticker, you know, yeah. and just do a, do a peruse. Um, but I have scored some great youth uh, pads, uh, mm -hmm. air pads, and sleeping bags. Yep. I mean, because that's kind of hard to find. Yeah. Is stuff for kids. Yeah. And for sure. I have gone there and scored, mm. you know, light used, like new. Um, and it, I, I was like, wow, Hoarding Marmot really has good equipment and this was all branded stuff too yeah for sure so yeah you guys are uh carry really nice stuff you don't just take in just anybody's junk right you guys no, got yeah. really good equipment we we try really hard to keep it pretty branded um and pretty lightly used stuff obviously stuff is going to slip through the cracks sometimes we're all mm -hmm. like what what why did you take this <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we kind of joke around with each other like why what was the thought process and they're like i felt really bad she was just giving me a like I, she was a really nice lady <laughs> and we're like well okay well Whatever, we'll price it to sell, but ultimately we want to have gear that's making it more accessible accessible for people to get into the outdoor industry. I mean, mountaineering and skiing is both very expensive sports and kind of making the barrier of entry a lot lower so people can get into those recreational sports easier um, with still the same quality of gear. So yeah. we typically right won't on. take things that are broken or dysfunctional, like sleeping pads you mentioned. We test all of those for at least 24 hours. Um, and if they seem to not be holding air, we'll test them again. Um, and if they just aren't holding air, we usually donate them um, or use them as our pack stuffing so we, the backpacks are full. Oh, yeah. um, so we end up yeah. reusing a lot of that stuff. Um, but yeah, we just try to keep things as as nice as possible and, and clean um, so people are getting gear that's really affordable um, in still great shape. Yeah, and you can actually really get all the way footed, fitted there. I mean, oh, boots, sure. pants, jackets, sleeping yep. bag, tent, yep. pads, mm -hmm. hat, gloves, winter gear. I mean, you guys have everything. Yeah, pretty much. We are seasonal, so if you're looking for skis in the middle of July, you're probably going to be out of luck. <laughs> um, <laughs> we will take every once in a while off a pair of, like, you know, 2020 Dina Fit backcountry skis comes in, we'll take them because they'll probably sell. But for the most part, um, we're pretty seasonal. But yeah, if it's something that we don't get a lot in, say socks or stoves or something, we usually carry that stuff retail as well. So we have a little selection of brand new stuff to, to kind of fill in the cracks of stuff that doesn't come in as often. Do you find that you guys are running out of space? There? All the time. Okay. <laughs> yeah, <it's laughs> my, so, yeah, my job is actually the retail manager, and I have to keep a pretty close tab on what's selling and what's not because we just don't have the room to sell everything. So we end up having many sales to try to help sell things because it is, like, overwhelming, and we're kind of pushing the bubble on how much stuff we can fit. Right now we have... I think three or four different sea kayaks and we kind of maxed out our boats and we're like, we love more boats, but at the same time, yeah. like, no wait room. till one sells because we don't have room. Could you hold on to that for a week or two? Yeah, exactly. So, so you said kayaks. Now, what about, um, I know you guys do actually snow, sold a snowboard over there, yep. uh, skis, oh, okay. cool. um, bigger items, rafts. Like, what's, where do you guys like make the cutoff? Um, a lot of times it has to do with how much space we have. So we had to pass, apparent, apparently, I wasn't there for it, but on a cataract because we just, it, we would have had to take it in and out of the store. And it was too big to fit through the door. And that oh. was kind of like, that was like, maybe Okay, so not. as long as it fits uh, through yeah. the door. Pretty much. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, we've taken, like, yeah, we've taken like fly fishing, like raft boat things before. We had a like 1970s inflatable raft with like wood slats that 
we've actually had multiple times, but it sold again. So <laughs> most of the time, multiple it, consignments. It keeps coming in, and we're like, this raft just keeps appearing. But uh, yeah, sea That's kayaks, awesome. whitewater boats, canoes. Um, I think we actually have a packable canoe right now. So there's a wide variety of different things that would take. Our limit is some. A lot of times we try to keep it human powered, um, so we won't take a lot of stuff that oh, okay, requires motor. you to have a motor or. Um, a, some of the more like safety equipment type stuff so like kiting stuff we don't typically take a lot of because it's really hard to make sure that it's safe to use um man it actually is a really really good place if because that stuff gets expensive man you're trying to oh, find yeah. a name brand man. um hiking boots name brand backpack sleeping bag i mean to get fully fitted i mean you're talking thousands of dollars easily but you can go over yeah. there and spend hundreds yep. versus thousands and be fully kitted with everything that they have and i yep. love the angle of just getting people introduced so it makes it affordable because yeah. it's okay if you get into it and maybe it's not for you but at least you didn't you know empty the bank account for it that's a lot you of know? the people we get or you can pass it along to somebody else that will or use you it take later, it back right? and sell it again yeah. right? yeah, that's what i mean oh, we, recycle it yeah a yeah. lot of times people are like well what if i don't necessarily like it i'm like you can always come in back and reconsign it um, as long as it's still in similar condition as when you, oh, yeah. you brought it. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of our cli like clients, especially in the winter, are people who are coming in like they just want to try alpine skiing and they've like rented gear a couple of times and like it but don't know if they want to buy their own stuff at full value and it's like, well, our skis are, I mean, skis depreciate really fast so you can get a pair of like, you know, two, three-year-old downhill skis for a couple hundred bucks maybe instead there of like go. a thousand. So. Yep. What's the uh, like craziest thing someone's tried to come in and consign? Oh goodness gracious! Um, <laughs> I First I don't even know. First thing that comes to mind is the guy that was trying to sell re like his tie dye shirts. That one was like <laughs> like cotton tie dye shirts that he was making, and like he was a crazy guy. But it was a like I don't know about that one. I mean, most of the time, this the coolest stuff we get in is the really vintage stuff. So we oh, nice. we have a small selection of stuff on display, and we've got some skis that that are we're going to hang on the walls that are like from the 70s they're really old vintage skis and we get you know old climbing gear in um wood handled ice axes are always the ones oh, that are like cool. ooh, those are super and they sell like people those are very valuable items mm -hmm. so the vintage stuff is always really really cool to see and yeah. especially like old mountaineering stuff that is just at this point like the technology has changed so much that it's super cool to see yeah. those vintage <laughs> items that like holy cow people used to like climb Denali with this gear that is like <laughs> archaic and yeah. it's like amazing the feats pounds. that they did. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yep. Yeah. No, that's really cool. I, I've always, uh, I've always liked what Horning Marmots uh, represents and, and, and the idea of recycling good gear in Alaska. Yeah, for sure. I mean, you know, cause gear can go to go into somebody's uh, shed or closet to die and yeah. it'd be yeah. a lot better put on a wall and, and and sold. And the other thing I love too is like, you can just do a quick cruise through Hoarding Marmot and it's just forever changing, right? Yep. The stuff just goes and, and it's always something new to look at and you might even go in there and buy something you weren't even looking for. Yeah. <laughs> uh, every day I go to work. Oh, you do? You, you, oh, you spend so a little bad. money there? It's so bad. I mean, we have an account, right? So, and it keeps track of everything you've ever bought and how much money and oh man, it's, 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 enough. it's a lot. The paycheck, the paycheck decreases with yes. those credits, right? Yeah, right? I, I try to keep it to where it's like, if I have credit, I buy things and if I don't, I'll pass on it, but every go. once in a while, I'm like, I just gotta have it. I just yeah. I have to have it. Yeah. Are, are you seeing local collectors come in? Like the, there's a lot of local like mountaineering. Yeah, for sure. I mean, we like the wood handled ice axes, for example, are something that's oh, on our cool. wish list almost yeah. all the time, and people will buy it to, to either make hey, his Eddie. art or just to collect. So yeah, we get a lot of those guys in. I mean, we have regulars that will come in like every other day and just, just look see through all got. the clothes just to see what's new and yeah. <laughs> like we know them by name. So uh -huh. it's pretty. Now, fun. do the employees get like first come? first serve yeah, like you see do. it and you're yeah. like oh i want this yeah we can oh, yeah. actually put our like on the invoices we do carbon copy handwritten invoices and on the like we give the like consigner theirs and then like immediately we'll put like naomi wants or who at least wants <laughs> 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 interested and then we have an area and i mean we try to keep it like only hold things for a week um and that policy is kind of there for if it, we, we can't hold things till it gets a mark down essentially is what's happening or till we have credit um and then bigger items we can only hold for 24 hours but yeah, it's it's a dangerous it's a dangerous game. I'll just go in the back and peruse to see if there's anything. Like, I'll come back for my weekend and be like, "Ooh, what's new? Yeah, yeah. What showed up? <laughs> yeah, exactly." Do you guys ever do any like big blowout stuff, like um, where you're just blowing it out, the yard every, sale, yard sale style, or just like not keep typically? It? Oh. Our ooh, 
our two... We've got a lot of wind coming in here. The winds of the shat coming I'm gonna, through. I'm going to hold it for a minute. Our, okay. Uh, we have two big sales that happen a year. There's one in the spring and one in the fall to help us switch between the seasons. And those stuff, that stuff can get up to 75% off. So oh, okay. it's called the fish sale. We put little fish hole shaped punches into the tags. And you can go shop around the store and try to find the fishes. And depending on how many fish punches there are, it's a certain percentage off. And that kind of, those are the big sales that happen. Every once in a while, we do a little like smaller sale. This not this weekend, but the one before we did just all the shirts because we were overfilled with them were 25% off. So just nice. got to keep up on the socials and, and come That's in and it. see if anything's on sale. Right on, right on. And the social media again is at the Hoarding Marmot. Yep, yep. Cool. Now, is there a website as well? There is, yep, hoardingmarmot.com. Hoardingmarmot.com. Now, yep. can people sell and buy on the website or is that more just like information? So it's more information. Um, you can't sell anything directly on the website. However, we you can buy things. So we actually have um, two employees that their almost their entire job is just posting stuff that's consigned onto the website. Um, it's not everything that we have, so you still got to come in and see if you want to know everything, you got to come in, but there is a pretty decent collection of stuff just on the website that you can check out and buy online. Awesome. Right on. Right on. Yeah. What's the most expensive thing that's come through there? Oh, I don't even know. Um, the, there are some specialty tents that come in that are multiple thousands of dollars sometimes. Mm. It's probably bikes. We currently have a Jeep, yep. a Jeep motorized full suspension bike that is... I believe like six grand. Well, I'm wow. looking for a fat Used. tire bike, so if someone comes in, <laughs> put your name on it, call me, yeah, yeah. and I'll come get it. <laughs> Just remember Alaska Wild Project guy. Yeah, right? <laughs> he said he wants this. We have a sweatshirt in it for yeah. you. Yeah, yes, we do. We do. Yeah, the fat tire bikes, those are popular items. We take those year round because people just. Bikes are a huge seller, in particular mountain bikes and fat bikes. They're, they're big ones. So. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. That's great. Well, thanks for coming and chatting yeah, with us and telling us about me. Hoarding Marmot. Yep. And once again, it's at the Hoarding Marmot on Instagram, HoardingMarmot.com. Yep. Um, right there off Northern Lights, correct? Yes. Yeah, Northern, Northern Lights and Spinard. Northern yeah. Lights and Spinard. Um, you can't miss it. It's in that little strip mall right there. There used to be the satellite store above, and yep. now it's Speedway it's Cycles. Speedway Cycles and us, and then a camera store is in that strip mall. Yep. Right on. Well, thanks for what you guys do, providing yeah. all this equipment for people that maybe are trying to get into the game. Yeah. And we love it. Keep it up. Yeah. Thank you. Thank, Thank you guys you for much. having me. You yes. Bet. And if you see that bike, let me know. <laughs> I will. <laughs> Right on, man. I love hoarding marmot, dude. I, do you guys? Do you, I know. I do. do you, yeah, Jack, I, I had to stop. Yeah. I had to stop going there, like to it check gets things a out. Addicting. Oh, dude. It's well, Kennedy was playing all the time at Dempsey, and the practices. You know, on our, like Sunday at two o'clock, I would drop her off, and I would just go cruise over there, and I was like, I couldn't help myself. Things, things like stoves. Uh, I, was I, mean, get, I was gonna get Dave. Okay. okay. Yeah. Those long-lasting kind of outdoor supplies. It's if you can get them second use, it's awesome because where else would that go? And you, you know, you're not putting something out landfill. You're not creating a new item. It, those like Coleman stoves last forever. Yeah. Actually, speaking about the Coleman stove, I mean the best one, the best wedding present I ever got was shout out to Kyle Sellers gave me a camping stove but it's like the old school one i yeah. mean we got married in 2007 and the now they're like burner with the wind yes the with the wind thing and, and that doesn't thing doesn't have a self-starter no yeah. no it just is like the most Are amazing wedding stove? yeah the most am amazing wedding present that i got from big kyle and like we use it i literally use that thing every single you weekend you can't find that stove like that anymore you can't nope. you can't and it's gonna last forever we it's have one on the boat and it's just it's a bomber like it's just yeah, you can't even like you, yeah, can't even like you can't even like you can't even break the thing, no, dude. No, it's just like it's thrown around in the boat and the four wheeler shaggy, doesn't you matter. Some, yeah. You got some product in there. Oh, don't shaggy, ever you see any rust shaggy on that sauce, thing. baby. Oh. All right, are we sampling yeah. it? What's the, what do we got? Here? got a little sample I here. Any samples? I just brought the bottles. Oh, oh I like the, the little atomic. baby bottles. Oh, okay, oh, Daniel's gonna drink the atomic. Oh, we should have a shaggy. I want to know how fast it take you to chug the atomic sauce. Shaggy, really quick, what's your Instagram handle? Hey, sh hey, Shaggy, throw those headphones on. Yeah, throw on. those on. Yeah, there we what's go. Your, what's your Instagram? <laughs> Facebook. Uh, Facebook? Oh. Okay, hold on. Um, what's your uh, address? <laughs> I live at. Shaggy at Shaggy.com. 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 Shaggy oh, right. There you go. Yeah. Yep. Okay. There it is, um, yeah. A little history on Shaggy. Too. Shaggy is um, a big-time hockey player, uh, okay. hockey promoter. Uh, he, we play against his team. Sometimes he tries to recruit us for his team. 
uh, to play. He's. Are you in charge of Sarvis, the Sarvis League, or just one of the main main the, captains? Just one of the captains. Of main one of the today. captains. So Shaggy's really involved in the hockey community, and he has his Shaggy sauce that um, we have been using at the hot dog stand. I use all the oh. time for salmon. Um, it's really actually our favorite wings at uh, the Blue Line yeah, in the O'Malley yeah, yeah, Center. Yeah. yeah. Um, the Shaggy sauce is the special one that you can get. Um, I I want to say that's. The primary place we've been eating that sauce. Why don't you walk us through the sauces that you have with us? Oh, it starts out with a honey teriyaki, and it's just made with honey instead of all the sugars. So it's got a richer, bolder flavor and texture. In fact, if you put it in the refrigerator, you cannot pour it out of the bottle. Oh, it thickens up pretty yeah, good. Yeah, Also, don't put it in the fridge. No, all these when product, all these products are what I call table stable. Okay. It's like Tabasco sauce, you can leave them on your table and pour it, uh, apply it to your food from there. So that one right there, the honey teriyaki, that's what I use in my sous vide with uh, salmon. So when I catch a fresh salmon, yes. fillet it up. I usually, you know, take the skin off, then I'll put a little bit of that on there. And then I will freeze it and then like with that in there. Yeah, and then like a couple vacuum seal it up. And then a couple days later, you know, they you, the day that I'm not gonna have time to cook, I'll throw the salmon filet in a pot of water with my sous vide and then I'll Bluetooth it at like three o'clock and be like, Okay, go up to this temperature, you know, one twenty five or whatever and then cook it in with that shaggy honey teriyaki and my kids and I just love that one. In the vacuum seal back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sous vide it. Oh yeah. my goodness. Yeah. yeah. I'm cool. keeping an eye on it. Okay. All right. It's <laughs> okay. getting kind of weird. Yeah. Over on here. <laughs> a, a nice thing about this honey teriyaki as well as the uh, Shanghai sauces is being made with the honey. It will glaze onto your food as you grill it or boil it. So okay. So so you were telling me about that because I went and actually bought a bottle of that because the last couple of times you didn't have it. And I, I really, you told me before that's really good on the salmon. So... Do you want to, like, I do a lot of baking and uh, on the charcoal grill. Do I want to, like, glaze that on the salmon and then put it on or something I want to put on afterwards and then let it let it simmer in there? It's, it's good to put it on while you're cooking it because then it helps it absorb into the meat. Okay. You get a better flavor all throughout the meat. And, and then I, you also want to put a little bit on just, like, high heat as you, to, like, At the very end of it yeah. real quick. Okay. And it kind of keeps the fats and stuff in the meat instead of, you know, boiling over and running off the oh, sides. Okay. Okay. It's like that right. kind of like this impenetrable, like, you know, layer. On the yeah. Okay, so that's the teriyaki. What do we got next? Next is the original, the medium. I originally called it mild, but uh, I was told that it's not mild, it's medium. It's about a Frank's or Sriracha heat level. Okay. It's also made uh, with honey, citrus, fruits, and peppers. Um, it's the original. I mean, it's originally made it for wings at home, and it just, I was working at a restaurant at the time and brought some in, and uh, they liked it, so I had to start supplying them. Next thing I knew, I was getting calls from. <laughs> Stores and they're wanted on their shelves, and including Costco, they're waiting for me to get my production up to get it in there. It's um pretty cool. It's uh, is that the shaggy sauce that we have at the wings? Yeah, when we go. Uh, that's the, 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 exactly. the that's the original. Yeah, yeah this is oh, the original. Man. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I need one of those too. <laughs> the, the original and the teriyaki are the best sellers. The um like I say, it's originally made for wings, and it goes on everything you put on the grill. Okay, so uh, was, if you went to like a Thai restaurant, like how many stars is this one? The the medium. One star? That's uh, probably five because they go by a level? ten star. Are you going heat level? Yeah, yeah heat yeah, level. Yeah. Yeah. This this would probably be maybe like a four, probably. It's not really four like, say, like, like say it's like a Frank's kind okay, of Okay, all right. Oh, there we go. Yeah. And then the next level up is is the hot, and it has two tablespoons of crushed ghost pepper per gallon. Mm. Oh, so okay. it's got it's got a little bit it's of heat. It's got a bite, yeah. Yeah. That no, one we, looks like it's a little uh, not as thick. Is that true, or am I just... Um, the, the Shanghai sauces are all the same thickness. Oh, they're all the same oh, okay. thickness. The, the honey teriyaki is, is very thick. Okay, that one's just yeah. extra yeah, thick. It, yeah. it, when you pour it out of the bottle, actually. you got like, squeeze it almost. Got it, got it. But the, the fire has a quarter cup of the same crushed concentrated mm, ghost mm, pepper, mm, mm. and then the Atomic has half a cup. Ooh. Oh, my goodness. And just the Atomic the comes in a, in a little... <laughs> people that are just listening here, um, you got them labeled by... Actually, probably by hotness to color. Uh, the Shanghai <laughs> sauce and the honey is the yellow with the tap, and then he's got <laughs> yeah. the he's got the hot one that has red, and then the black is like you better just watch out. <laughs> yeah, the, the little bottle. I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't go to this end of the spectrum. This is too hot. For That's me, too hot for you. Really? Yeah, it's just just too much. Make, black make, label. Just, yeah, just black making label. Just, just making it is is, is dangerous. <laughs> oh, There's yeah, a lot of ghost pepper up. in the air. Yeah. Shaggy, yeah. what what like what's behind this sauce making? Like what like. 
inspired? What started it? What was the the match that lit this project up for you? Um, wings. Okay. I was home one night and wanted to make wings, and I had not enough of any one of my favorite sauces, so I started mixing them, the Frank's oh, sriracha, yeah, yeah, the yeah, honey, yeah. the different things like that, and came up with something that I thought was, was good. So okay. I took it to the restaurant I was managing at the time, and they all liked it, and like I say, then it just took off. I started... That was it. Um, and so sex. people that don't know, this is all made here, bottled here. You got the made in Alaska, um, you know, polar bear with the baby sticker on there. This is an entire Alaskan sauce company. Correct. And it's it's all made in a DEC and FDA approved kitchen here in Anchorage. Tell, tell us about that kitchen, though. It's your it's your home. Yeah. It's your condo. <laughs> I, I, well, he told me he's ready to expand. He was actually asking yeah. about your spot here, Jack. He's like, I, I need a shaggy a yeah. sauce department in here. Right. I, I literally at this point live in a Shanghai factory. I have a, a bedroom in my house that is mine. Everything else is actually vinyl floors and steel shelving and three compartment steel sinks. It's like I say, it's a DEC approved kitchen. Yeah. And um, <laughs> that's so funny, man. I would love yeah, to see it's, that. It's, <laughs> you're welcome to come by any time, yeah, right? right? Now, are you bumping only Wu Tang in the in the Shanghai <laughs> in the Shanghai <laughs> laboratory or what, man? <laughs> sounds like you got to have some Wu Tang like plan in there. <laughs> so now, is this a full time job for you? Um, it, it will be come October, hopefully. Okay. That's my goal is to just nice. be doing sauce by October and. Okay. Wow. Do that. I've already got a small shop down in South Carolina that's making it down there, just doing, oh. doing weekend shows down there, and it just took. A, I was a little concerned as to how it was going to do down there, but they, they love it down there. It's, wow. Okay. So it's where can people great. find this stuff? Uh, other right now, than the Blue Line. Other than the Blue Line, <laughs> <laughs> uh, the Anchorage New Sagaya stores. Okay. There's okay. City Market and Midtown. There's Julek Ace Hardware, uh, Red Apple Market. And if you find yourself in Barrow, they have some up there. Indian Valley. Oh meets. no way! Oh, Indian Valley too. Yep. And then, yep. yeah, it's it's around. Like say, um, Costco and the other stores wanted, but I just am not able to do production. Yeah, I'm sure when yet. you go to Costco, you gotta have a pallet of that stuff ready yeah, to go. Yeah. So, oh, it'll be gone in five days. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. probably about probably about eighty percent of anyone who everyone who tastes this at any kind of event that I do, they they buy it. It's um, it's. I don't know. It's, it's surpri- good surprises, stuff, man. surprises yeah. me every day. People eat this stuff, and I just I, <laughs> and I make it. So you know, yeah, yeah. yeah. it's a it's, it's a really good, good business. To show what it is, it's obviously good uh, quality stuff. How, how many bottles would you say at this point you're producing a year? No, oh, geez, well the production levels actually have sold more than double what I did last year already. Just in, just now yeah, in June, just, yeah. Just people at home want that shaggy baby. Yeah, and I'm starting to get. I'm starting to do a lot more markets. I've actually got people that are doing markets like this now in different parts of the state. Okay. Mm. Well, um, I so saw your. I saw your. Um, you had a booth out there at the um, at Cabela's the other day, but you weren't there. I don't know who the lady was, but she was selling that stuff like crazy. And I was like, "Where's Shaggy?" He's like, "Oh, he's at somewhere else." Like you must have been like <laughs> you had to split the hairs and be at two places at once or something. Yeah, no, I've got people who just um, come to me and buy it just to vendor themselves. Got like, it. Oh, there, cool. There, there's a guy who does shows. Um, like right now, he's at the um, weekend market at Diamond Center. It used to be the downtown. Market. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They're yep. doing they're doing that there, and he's doing really well there. And he also um, does uh, shows in Palmer and uh, Fairbanks. Yeah, yeah. Can you get it by the barrel yet? <laughs> five gallon bucket. <laughs> <laughs> I've actually had people ask me for five gallon buckets. <laughs> but well, I would just right think if no. someone's gonna, if someone has uh, some like remote uh, kitchen or something, sure, you know, there you go, and they yeah. want a whole bunch of it, or, or they're up on the slope, or they're you know in the village they're or something. Kitchen out there somewhere. Yeah, they might want to just get a bucket's worth instead of you know the bottles. Yeah, well, the restaurants I sell it to now buy it in half gallon bottles. Okay. Oh, there so it is. It what are, who are those big restaurants at? Oh, actually, users. 907 Ale House is putting out a new menu this week or next week, and the Atomic Sauce is going to be on Wings. Oh, on, I'm a regular on, on, there. On the I'll have to go check those out. Yeah. Um, El Rodeo Restaurant in Muldoon, they sell lots of the teriyaki sauce. Okay. In fact, the owner the other day told me, Shaggy says, your wings are out selling mine. And they're not even on the menu. It's just word of mouth to all these customers. And so oh, it's, wow. Is that that's, right? That, yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, Excellent. It is at um, Jalapeno's, Eagle River and Anchorage. Yeah, yeah. But you have to ask for it. Okay. Oh, it's not, special. It's not on the menu. exclusive, huh? Yeah, Ooh, it's kind of nice. like It's like the Euro dog. It's like, <laughs> it is like the Euro dog. Oh, shaggy. <laughs> The top shelf Pro shaggy tip. sauce, yeah. <laughs> and, it, and so shaggy, it's S-H-A-G-I. It's not the, it's not the boom bostic. 
Right. And, and it's not uh, Shaggy from... Uh, Boombastic? No. Uh, <laughs> Scooby-Doo. Uh, Scooby-Doo. Thank oh, you, Jack. yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. There it is. There's oh, the other Shaggy. Okay. Yeah. So you're one yeah, of the top it. three Shaggies. Yes. There's yes. Boombastic, and there's Shaggy from... Uh, He's the, he's the and Alaskan he's the Alaskan sauce, Shaggy, man. baby. Yeah, I wonder how it tastes on Scooby Snacks. Ooh, Ooh probably okay. real good. Yeah. 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 Atomic. My dog's there. There has been some experimenting going on. I, they're, they're talking about doing some different things with a Shaggy Shanghai. Oh, oh, Shanghai. Ooh, we might want to holler AKO. Oh, you holler AKO Farms about that, yeah. man. They can put, yeah. do a Shaggy cart. A shaggy a cart, a little spicy, huh? Maybe teriyaki, huh? Sid, yeah. holler at your boy Shaggy over here. We'll get it up at the treehouse. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that CBD hot sauce. That CBD hot sauce, exactly. man. That would be real good. That's actually it's it's going that hey, way, man. Hey, it's going that way. You never know. It is. They got all kind of drinks and weird things going on, man. Yeah. Why not a sauce? Working yeah. on working on the label as we speak, gentlemen. There it is. Okay. Green, green, oh, it'll yeah. be the green label. Instead <laughs> <laughs> of the state of Alaska, it'll be the little leaf. Yes. Back there, right? <laughs> the little nice. leaf. Like, there it is. I look okay. like you cool guys. I'll have my shades on. You know, kicking back. Oh, like, yeah. Okay, there we go. <laughs> Let's do this. Shaggy, thanks there for coming is. out, man. Thank you, man. I hope you sold a whole bunch of bottles. Um, yeah. The people that are looking for it, uh, we said the places. It's Shaggy. Tell us the website. Is the website Shaggy? Shaggy.com. Shaggy.com with the S H A G I. Dot com. Get your sauces. We've tasted this stuff. We love it on the wings. We love it on the salmon. Yep. It's just any fish or meats. It's just it's great yeah. stuff. And and it's table safe. What was it? table stable? It's table stable. That means you don't have to put it in the fridge. You can keep it in the counter. Oh, you yeah. can put it next to the uh, next to the uh, yeah, top make, ramen. Make and it the, a staple of your kitchen, man. Just yeah. get it in there. That's yeah. a three year shelf life. Three year shelf yeah, life. That's good enough. So. Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. That's it right there. Put it right next to your Heather's choice. You'll be all set. Right. <laughs> I'll actually, bring it for the Heather's Choice. I bet this actually would be really good. Oh, a little yeah. bottle of that. Yeah, that's don't, don't that's ready me. for a don't sheep hunt me. right there. Yeah, bring lots of toilet me. paper with you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Might get a little hot. <laughs> Shaggy. Hey, Shaggy, thanks again, bro. Thanks for coming thanks, out. Yeah, thanks, guys. It, we nice appreciate it. Nice to meet you. Really Thank nice you guys. to meet you, man. Yeah. All right. All thanks, right, Shaggy, Shaggy. Man. I love that stuff, man. Those wings. We. I think we bought. I think actually our hockey team ordered the most. Chicken strips ever that yeah. one time? Yeah, yeah so probably. the second to last game, I think we had 108. Yeah. Yeah, oh, well, really? you know, Sh- Shaggy brought like all the juniors <laughs> in that week, so we skated real hard. You know? Oh, yeah, he brought all his little young friends that whoop us up real oh, quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, man. A, a bunch of 40 year olds skating against 20 year olds yeah, out of juniors, yeah. so we were a little tired. <laughs> we need to get our shag and, uh, on. Come we get, on we in, Dave. Get that Come on in. <laughs> let's, get Dave, let's get Dave in here. All right, so next we got. Uh, Dave, Dave, what's your last name, Dave? Stoddard. Stoddard. Okay. Just kind of had not be about that close there. Dave there Stoddard go, Dave. from uh, Full Curl Archery. Man, we talk, you, we talk about you guys a lot. Um, <laughs> this do, is man. only episode 17 that's coming out, but I want to say your name has been mentioned at least in 10 episodes. Oh, totally. Oh, yeah. At least. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Jack is a big bow hunter. He's trying yeah. to get me into bow hunting. And uh, I know you want to. You said you have yeah, a bow you want to shoot. I was talking to Dave earlier. I got that expedition. I need to get tuned up and get going on. So, so yeah. Dave, uh, Full Car Archery is located on Old Seward and Huffman. Yes. And um, you guys are a full service. You guys sell bows. You can shoot bows. You can fix bows. You can do anything bow related, right? And yes. they have their 20 yard range in there. And then you also, do you solve the techno? Yeah, we have the techno, then we have a 10 yard range, and then we do lessons in the techno also. We have a, curtains we block off and teach in there. Yeah. Wow. And like, so, uh, you know, my first bow is of course given to my, my dad, and then my second bow also by my dad never fitted. And then my last bow that I bought, I don't know, when I came and saw you, what, five or six years, five years ago? Yeah, and, about five uh, years. And so when I walked in there, you know, we were able to shoot every bo- bow in the shop, basically. Wow. You know, no looking at the names, like what, what you know, how does it fit? What is the release like? What's the pull like? And you know, you guys are a professional outfit and just totally got me dialed in. I love my bow. Yeah, nice. that's something that I want to go in there with that same mindset and go talk to you and be like, hey, I'm trying to, Where I'm new to the game. Where do I start? I don't know the brands. I don't know what's cool and what's not i just want something that's gonna you know hit the target obviously that depends on you but something that i can learn with and be able to be successful in the field with um so i'm assuming that i could go in there and just how long would that take 
Uh, it's best to come in and shoot with us for a little bit, and then once we you know what you're doing and what each boat feels like, then it's nice to like go have lunch, and then we'll set a couple up and come back and try them all, and then you'll see the differences between them on how the draw cycle of one is different from another, and wow. how one has more hand shock than another. Okay, so it's more and uh, up to the person that's shooting the bow what they like, yeah. um, versus the little. Yeah, it's more like the bow actually chooses you than you choosing it. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. That makes sense. Yeah, that that makes definitely sense. clears it up right there. Yeah. 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 And, yeah. I, and I'm assuming there's a, a wide range of prices from beginner to extreme level? Yeah. yeah. It's what it, based on whatever price range you want to be in. I mean, you can go down to just two or $300 up to the sky's the limit. Sky's the limit on that. What's the most expensive bow that you've seen? Oh. Um, Three or four thousand dollars. Wow, yeah. yeah, that's easily. crazy. Easily. And that's good. And then and you, that, you have that nice used wall there too. Yes, we have a consignment wall. We sell bows for oh. other people. We got a lot of guys that they buy a new bow every year, and, oh, then, yeah. and then they just have me sell their bow. Right. Oh, yeah. that's right. Oh, and is that is that go well? I mean, do you see a good recycling? Oh yeah, uh, definitely. Yeah. Okay, because yeah. I mean, like we were talking about earlier with hoarding marmot. The idea is somebody wants to get into something, but they don't want to break the bank. No, like they can come in. That's and it. And we just set up a used one for them. Yeah, and that's then, cool. And then we do a whole bunch of, like, we do a lot of lessons, and some people just want to rent bows until they actually feel comfortable enough that they're oh, ready what they want to do. And we have wow. rental bows, and yeah. some will come in thinking they want a compound and start shooting a recurve and have more fun doing that and, and end yeah. up getting a recurve. Oh, so you guys have the recurve as well. Yeah. Now, yeah. what do you guys do for uh, youth? Youth, we do, uh, we do homeschool programs in the morning. Uh, they run a couple weeks and when the school season starts up. Okay. And then That's before have, school? Yeah, we do them like 10 in the morning for homeschool kids. Oh, homeschool. Like, gotcha. Yeah. Oh, okay, gotcha. Like last year, a whole bunch of kids were homeschooled, so yeah, we were yeah. really busy last year. <laughs> I yeah. Bet you were, yeah. Yeah, and then we have youth league on Thursday night, uh, adult leagues on Wednesday night, and traditional leagues Tuesdays. We shoot traditional 3D animals on Tuesday. Okay. The so when you do the leagues, is it um, so is it like a digital screen of an animal, or are you doing more of a point system like darts? Uh, like adult league is actually like darts okay. on paper targets, and then we have techno league. The slope guys love that. They'll shoot like as a team, them and their wife or something. And they'll come in and shoot on their time off. Okay. So they don't have to be here every Wednesday night. They might come in and get back from their hitch and shoot week one, two, and three and go have dinner with the wife, come the next day, shoot four, five, and six, and we don't see them again for a month. Yeah. And that's right. actually a movie screen. You shoot the movie screen, and it bases where you hit an animal. Oh, really? What you're, it's like a virtual hunting game. Yeah, oh, so it's, it's like really a video game. Yeah. 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 Oh, that is awesome. Yeah. yeah. So someone could you do like a birthday party? Yeah, like we, do, we do quite a few birthday parties. Oh, really? Yeah, we do them on oh. our days off. Man, there's some yeah. single boys out there need to know how to take a woman out on that first date. Man. Yeah, yeah. You know, take them out to full <laughs> throw archery, man. Get them hyped, Hell man. Yeah, dude. What are these single parents? Get, get your kids out there to get out <laughs> there real, and do it. I mean, yeah, go check it out. What's your opinion on rifle hunting versus bow hunting? Uh, it actually starts to get too easy. It gets uh, too easy? Uh, it's like all the guys that are rifle hunters, when they decide to start archery hunting, They'd rather go and hunt and, and not bag any game and have more fun actually trying to get as close as they can and not get nothing. Than Got it. It, it becomes more of a challenge thing, it right? Is. Yeah, it does. Yeah, you're, whereas you're competing with, on their turf, yeah. right? Yeah. Like yeah. Within, within their sensory area. Yeah. You know? Yeah. What's, what, what's your personal uh, distance that you like would like to see an animal within? Uh, well, I'm hunting my recurve right now. Like, I'll be out tonight going after bears again, and I'll be within 20 yards easily. 20 I mean, yards. Yeah, yeah wow. Dave, you mentioned you were chasing a big boy here. Uh, yeah. Nice young lady ended up getting it uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> getting it after you, which ended up working out for her. Yeah, it worked out for her, not for me. <laughs> but, you, but you mentioned that you got just outside of your comfort zone in terms of yeah, distance like, on that. And yeah. Then, yeah, my yeah. recurve, I'm not really comfortable shooting. I mean, I could do 30. But I'm more comfortable getting closer with that. Yeah. yeah. And, I, and I take, I mean, like, she got her bear, and it means more to her than it meant to me. Well, so. I thought it was really cool from a guy who's probably shot a million arrows, literally, yeah. and <laughs> killed however many critters that you, your humility in telling me about missing, you were just, like, almost yeah. excited about it because it was such a challenge with that bow, right? Oh, it is, yeah. It doesn't always work out. Yeah. No, there's no sights. <laughs> no that, sights, no nothing. That was the guy who just had that much fun not bagging the animal, right? That's yeah. what I meant. Yeah. Like, it's just yeah. It's fun just sitting that. out there walking around looking for animals. Yeah. I mean, just seeing them. I mean, I mean, we were out there last night. We didn't see a single bear, but 
Was listening to all the eagles chirp and the seagulls. Just and, being out there, right? Yeah, it was sure. beautiful. Watching, there just was a hummingbird flying around last night. It was kind of crazy. A little hummingbird jumping around on the ground. Yeah, yeah. that's awesome. Yeah. yeah, you don't even it's see all that about very being often out ever. there. It's like where do you see a hummingbird up here? It's weird. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, are, it just here. it just kind of reminds me. Um, oh, sorry, Brooksy. I uh, I was reading a book. Uh, um, Summer of the Comanche Moon or something like yeah, that, yeah. and it really details. Um, the first american indian comanche tribe and how all those kids that was like the first thing that they learned was how to shoot obviously it was traditional oh, yeah. a traditional bow and these kids would be proficient by the time they're 10 11 12 years old on horseback you know at a full gallop be right. able to shoot anything a moving target like and not it, even sitting normal they would yeah. be like on these weird positions and that's and that's why they were able to exceed and excel because they would be able to literally like lay sideways on this on the horse and be able to shoot under the horse yeah. as the horse is running so that they could shoot and hit the target but no one could hit them yeah i mean they could hit the horse um but they were like you know protected by that right. which is like insane now along with that um you don't see a lot of horse slash archery yeah we corner? actually there's actually a horse club up here now oh there there's is one out in willow and there's one here in anchorage and they actually it's, it's called horse horse archery they use a horse bow it's now like, is that legal to yeah. like hunt an animal really on hunt a horse them. no there is actually they shoot competition okay they ride around the horses and shoot targets as they pass them got it but you couldn't actually shoot an animal let's say you have a caribou tag and you're out there with yeah. your horse <laughs> probably not probably not i mean that's a good question and though like, right i don't it think down. it's in the regs but <laughs> I, <don't laughs> I mean we, we have to get the fishing game yeah, guys in here and ask them. it seems like it'd be like with like a boat like you have to come to stop right yeah. like i bet Is you'd have to stop with i mean horse. i know a lot of people do horse back hunting, hunting and then you have to be off the the horse to shoot i'm not sure oh, i'm not sure man that's that's an interesting question, question. Yeah. Very. <laughs> yeah. it's just we'll, we'll get to the bottom of this and we'll find out because <laughs> that's a cool I mean, question though i wondered about that too if that was like a lost art or if that still exists. well i mean you can what? shoot from your four-wheeler right oh, as long as it's stopped areas, yeah, as, as long, long as it's stop, stopped yeah, yeah, okay. they, i think too. you have to shut it off yeah, like right. well not there's not a running. fair chase thing too yeah. where you're not allowed to like chase them down no, you as can't well do that, yeah. okay so I, but i just wondered if it's non-motorized and you're on I think the horse to like turn like off the engine. so it seems yeah. like you have to stop the horse <laughs> yeah i don't know that's that's <laughs> actually in we'll general, general man. I'm gonna look that up. Like I haven't tried. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it seems like it's harder. How about if the horse is running <laughs> you know? the other way from the animal? That seems cool. Yeah. You may have to turn around on the ho horse and shoot now it. Now, so if hard. it's a giant grizzly chasing you, they might give you a pass. They yeah. might get a oh, pass. then you do whatever yeah. you got to do. <laughs> yeah, horse defense, Brandon. <laughs> That's right. It's very That's important. Right. Exactly. These horse owners. So you yeah. got the black bear hunting. You told me earlier you're up all night and you're oh, about yeah. to go back out, yeah. and you got your eye on one. Yeah, there's a couple of them out there. There's a couple of them Gotta out wait. there. All the little ones keep showing up. Yeah, yeah. You're waiting for the waiting, big boy. He shows up after the season closes. You know that. Yeah. Oh, we got a couple more days. That's not, <laughs> not many. <laughs> <laughs> then, it's, then it's all fishing. So are you, you looking go. for black or brown? or Black right now. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. then do you eat those? Oh, yeah. 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 What do you like to make out of them? Um, everything. Bear bacon, breakfast sausage. Yeah. yeah. Good yeah. chili. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sounds yeah, that's good. that's one thing that we've kind of been getting a little pushback. We posted some pictures of some uh, father-dad trips of people hunting black bears, and you seem to get a lot of pushback whenever you post an animal uh, black bear for some reason. But a lot of people that don't live here and aren't a part of this culture don't realize that we actually eat this animal. Right. We actually mm -hmm. take all the meat. There's nothing wasted. We use the hide. We use the skull. We use all the meat, and it's delicious. And I think for some people that disconnect is there and they haven't realized that this is actually something that is a seasonal food for us yeah yeah, yeah. It's more people out in the low 48 than up here yeah and actually mm -hmm. it's a lot of europeans i found a lot of people from outside of the united states that that you know i was talking to my dad about it he's like well they don't have any more bears there because they ate them all yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know yeah, that's probably mind. why yeah, you know yeah. Yeah. i was like oh that kind of makes sense yeah, you know yeah, yeah. well the other side of our our bear stuff and i'm a huge component um is obviously you know a lot of opinions on the subject which is the predator control management side of bears i'm yeah. a huge i'm a huge advocate for hunting bears and and helping out the other populations and and our state has a very, very, very healthy population of them. And, um, yeah. you know, ultimately our management system, I think, is dialed in in terms of making sure that those populations stay healthy for us to hunt. And it helps also manage and keep the other 
uh, you know, populations healthy that the bears prey on, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So, is there any um, events that Full Curl has coming up that people should know about? Um, say most of our events are in the winter time. Okay. We do charity events. We hold breast cancer shoots, and we just, they're just fun events. You never had to shoot a bow ever in your life. And okay. People will show up, and we just shoot for fun and raise money for a bunch of different charities. Right uh, on. Yeah. What are the hours of the shop? Uh, right now we're open from Tuesday through Friday from 11 to 7 on a Saturday, 10 to 7. Oh, that's a nice schedule. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know, you show up these these businesses around town, and, and some of them have, you know, pretty good employees, and sometimes you're just working with the owner. Over at Dave's shop there, every one of the guys, your brother, uh, your your other employees, th- these yeah. guys know their shit. Yeah. Like you sit yeah. there, you can talk to them all day, you know, you have any problems, you can call on the phone, and... They've got me dialed in, and I'm probably one of the harder, like, <laughs> kind of like nuanced people to dial in. And so, if you if you do want to get into bow hunting or just shooting bows, these are these guys are legit. They they know their their game, and you should go in and see them. Yeah, definitely yeah, top quality. I've only ever heard good things about full core archery. Yeah, um, I do want to get in the game. I, I haven't told my wife this yet. <laughs> Um, <laughs> just another thing <laughs> that I'm about to get in the game here, and then I just know that it comes with um, so much passion, and 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 once you go archery, it just seems like everyone that I've known, such as yourself, is like that's that's it, like that's the first thing on your mind is like, can I go with the bow? The transition yeah. is hard though, because especially like where we're at, all, all three of us, where we have young kids and families that we want to feed with wild game, is like you have to go out there and know that you. You're probably not going to come back with anything more yep. often yep. than not. Yep. And yep. so for me, it's really hard to put the rifle away, yeah. right? Because it's like it's taking a big chance. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Um, good shot, though. Well, thanks for coming and having yeah, a no chat problem. with us, and thanks for coming out to the event. And uh, I'll definitely be over there, and yeah. we'll we'll have to come over there, and maybe we can do a podcast from over there. Sure. In one of your yeah. events yeah. and, and yeah. get Good people out there and i know my my sons i mean we, we got them those little kid bows and yeah. they're ready to step up to the oh, next yeah. level and i know your oh, daughter yeah. has that cool bow oh yeah yeah, yeah, yeah my no, son like saw it. that and he's he's like poppy yeah dave you mentioned you had some uh you, you know you got a little uh euro thing and the with all the bears and skulls and all that oh, kind yeah. of thing i'd love to network with you and get going on that yeah. too so. no problem yeah there. Learn some tricks of the trade from tricks a, of the trade. Yeah, <laughs> from the old codger. That's right, the old <laughs> yeah, bear hunter. Exactly. Dave, <laughs> thanks for Thank coming you. out, everybody. You, full Dave. core hey, archery. Nice Check nice them out. Yeah. Do you guys have an Instagram and anything like that? Uh, yeah, Instagram, Facebook, both. Full core archery. Yep. That's yep. the name. Yep. Instagram, yep. Facebook, yep. website. Yep. There it is. Yeah. Nice oh, and it's, easy. It's a badass site. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Well, thanks for and come. Good luck. Good luck with the big boy. Hopefully, he comes out for you today. Yeah, that's it. It better. <laughs> better, yeah. Okay, it's, the season's you. almost over. <laughs> Thanks, Dave. Uh-huh. All right, thank you. All right. Well, that was great that Dave came by and talked with us. He's uh, one of the people that we've been kind of wanting to have. We probably actually will bring him back for a longer podcast because we really want to get into the archery stuff. I'd like to have Dave come in and, and talk recurve and bring Jake back in and maybe do an extended thing with him or we go set up over there on one sure. of his days and, oh, and do really a full cool. like lesson thing because yeah. I, I've never shot a bow. Not once. I've right. never even tried it. I, I'm with you. I haven't and, either. And Jack's been getting me to wanting me to do it. And yeah. I, I just know that as progress as you progress as a hunter, you want to, things to be um, a new, little bit more challenging. New, new challenges and just a little bit in more the, difficult. In the hobby and preparation and all the other stuff that goes along with a new outdoor activity or you know uh, creates a whole other task and challenge of everything that you're doing. Yeah. You know. Yeah, and then to have oh, a local guy, a local guy that's here that's ready yeah. to rock. Put those great. headphones on, brother. Sweet. Yeah. There's All a right. left and right side if you look on their side there. So uh, there now go. coming up to the uh, table, we got, tell me your name again. Uh, Isaac Cortez with Alaska. Isaac Axe Isaac Cortez. Yeah. Just go ahead and be about that close. Oh, there we go. This Isaac. can move to. Yep. Uh, so the Axe, AKAxeCo.com is the website. Um, Alaska Axe Company came kinda through. Kind of wants to roll there a little bit. Just kind of get it. There you go. Yeah, there, there we, we go. go. And they did right. their little axe throwing thing. And you guys brought the trailer. And my goodness, yeah, I just setup, I just rebuilt man. my trailer for my hot dog stand. And I thought that that was a, quite a task. But looking at your guys' thing, like... Holy shit, dude! <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a it's a work in progress. So uh, how it actually started was uh, 
we uh, actually bought out another company. It was Hickory Handle, so we bought their business out, and we originally started. We're the first indoor axe throwing venue in the state of Alaska. Okay. And they came to us, and they offered us um, a deal. We ended up uh, going back and forth a couple times, and so we're kind of refabricating it uh, as we go. Uh, but yeah, it's fun. It's, uh, it's it's a good time, and we got to go to different venues and go to uh, birthday parties and corporate events and and some uh, uh, weddings. We got a couple weddings coming oh, up. A couple accidents nice. at yeah. the weddings. There it <laughs> yeah. is. Well, it's a cool, unique activity. I mean, you got the bouncy house and you got the axe throw. <laughs> yeah, dude. It's, it's like darts for like men, that. right? Yeah, it's there you darts go. for yeah. men. Yeah, hardcore, exactly. hardcore men. Yeah. Now, yeah. do you guys have to change that piece of wood that the axe is going into? Is that like a one-day... Yeah, so it depends how much it throws and how, how good people throw it. So they start throwing the axe sideways. Uh, it, it destroys the targets pretty quick. But if, if you teach them good throwing techniques, uh, it can last a, a good amount of time. But it's local cottonwood. Uh, we have a buddy that owns a mill, and uh, he, he brings them to us. And, okay. and we change them out. It oh, just cool. depends how much... How so cottonwood is only good for uh, <laughs> axe throwing. <Right>? Yeah. <laughs> and making We've, really bad campfire smoke. <laughs> yeah, we found out what it's good for, finally. <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you what, it, it does, it it, uh, it burns, uh, it smokes a lot. Yeah, it's it doesn't, brutal. doesn't yeah. burn that good. Now, do you guys have a physical location? <laughs> yeah, we do. Uh, so we have a brick and mortar, and it's located off of Lake Otis in 68. Uh, okay. It was the old Video City originally. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. So that's yeah. what it started out as. Did you guys keep oh, it red okay. still there? Yeah, so the exterior still has red and white. Uh, paint's a little uh, wonky. But, uh, yeah, we kept it original. You can see when you walk under the awning, when you walk inside, or before you walk inside, there's uh, it still says DVDs and, and yeah. movie rentals and stuff. So it's pretty cool. You yeah. Know, funny story. Painted. I think I stole my first porno from that place. Because <laughs> they used to keep, like, the actual movie behind the thing. Yeah. And I crept yeah. in there one day and was just like, yeah, ooh, yeah. this looks good. <laughs> old Video City, man. That's, the old Video City. Uh, video City's a character, man. You walked in there and you're like, uh, that's where it smells. Like, what's yeah. going on? Well, I'm in a barn to rent a movie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, the funny part is, is we'll have people walk in and they're like, I remember where this was at. I remember where this was at. I remember where the X-ray. The porn was that. It's just funny. It brings back memories. Yeah, it's nostalgic. Yeah. Are now I'm going to throw some axes at it. Do you guys have the whole building in there? Like yeah, the, we oh, do. Okay. And we're working actually on working uh, on building some outdoor lanes outside. Oh, cool. Um, so okay. hopefully that'll come here soon in the next couple weeks. I got your oh, hoodie yeah. Over. What was like, uh, like, do you have to get like a special licensing or permitting or anything like that for what you're doing? I, just with it. So having axes and sharp blades and the whole nine, like, <laughs> you know, the funny curious. thing is, is you think it, you think it's uh, pretty dangerous, but it's actually a pretty safe sport. Yeah, you have the weight of the axe. As soon as you throw it, it, it dies for the most part, unless somebody's throwing a little uh, ridiculous. Uh, but it's it's all based off of your profit. So, you say you're going to make two hundred fifty thousand dollars in a year, and you you make four hundred thousand, it's going to go up, right? So the more people that come in, uh, the higher risk. Uh, and then the less mm. people that come in, the less risk. So it's pretty safe. Uh, it originally started in Toronto in uh, 2011, and it took off, and it rolled down the East Coast, uh, and it's just kind of worked its way uh, West Coast. And yeah, it's then, a uh, definitely yeah. a fairly new business. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, first I've ever even heard of it. Yeah. Yeah. What got you into it? What did you get started with this? Uh, so we just kind of got the idea. It came out of it. Uh, saw a couple, you know, on, on social media. And uh, decided it was something something that we wanted to do and something we wanted to go after. I uh, I was a deck hand, and then I had my captain's license when I was 19. I did uh, uh, worked up on the slope for a couple few years, and then uh, I did uh, construction. So I did concrete and asphalt. And I was looking to do something that was a little easier on my body. Yeah, a little helps. less strenuous. Yeah, yeah. 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 So I'm gonna throw axes all day. Yeah. <laughs> What's better than throwing axes? The next thing we need is just a little beer drink in there, right? That's right. That's right. <laughs> so yeah, that's kind of where it came up. It came okay. up a couple of years ago, and and we uh, got the idea and ran with it. And so, you were doing it on like a? Were you doing a competition level where you were going out of state and doing this, and then you decided to bring it back? Oh, it's an actual like ESPN. Yeah, it's on no, ESPN. Right? I, just mean, I as saw far it the as other where day. Where you got started? Like, were you doing something that was like, hey? I like this, and then you started Were you, the like, business. Competitive? Or? No, no, I had never thrown axes before, you know, oh. in a place like that, and it, the, the idea just came up, and it was like, why not? It's Alaska, oh, let's okay. do it. Yeah. And I uh, never it's thrown an axe. Fitting. 
two weeks before we opened, we got the, our brick and mortar, signed the lease. 16, I think, I think it was 16 days later, we ended up opening up and we just started throwing right before we opened. So it was pretty wow. fun. Well, so I you're was, learning with the people. Oh, yeah. The yeah, okay, yeah, that's okay. fun. So. Well, I was watching you instruct a little boy over there and and I got a, actually got a really cool video. We'll, put, we'll get it on, on Instagram if that's okay with you. Yeah, 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 for sure. And, and, and the way you threw, the way you were giving instruction and you hit the bullseye dead center. And I'm like, it looked like I was like, okay, this dude must have been doing like competitions or something before. Yeah. Like, that's what I just assumed yeah. because your instruction level, your technique, and the way you were telling that that little boy was like someone has been doing it for 20 yeah. years or something. Yeah, yeah. So it was great, man. Well, the thing is, is it's all about technique and, and, and correcting uh, what people are doing wrong. And I think that's the hardest part. I was... Uh, I was down in uh, Cooper Landing. There's a there's a mobile unit out there, and it's uh, Peninsula Power, or I think it's Peninsula Axe Throwing. And okay. he was like, any any techniques you can get to help me throw, everybody's throwing sideways. And so it's just all about correcting people and, and making sure they're throwing it right and getting it straight. And it's just the little things uh, to correct. And it's hard. A lot of people have a hard time. I still have some employees who... Uh, they really try and, and get it, and they call me and they say, "Hey, Isaac, I can't get him. Uh, can you get in and teach him?" <laughs> yeah, so yeah. it's just it's just the little things that help. Cool. So, so is the point system like darts? Yeah, it, it, it's somewhat like that. So we're part of the World Axe Throwing League, uh, which is the biggest league uh, in the world. There's actually a, a National Axe Throwing League, and it goes one, two, three, four, and then bullseyes are six points. They actually just added. I'd say three months ago where the bullseyes are actually smaller and then outside of the bullseye uh, is five points. Okay. And we haven't changed that yet, but that's something we're looking at doing. And then the two, what about those two? Uh, oh, the like blue dots. Blue so dots, those are kill yeah. shots. So it originally starts when you do tournament style. It goes, uh, you get five throws, you switch sides and you do five throws. So it's even on both sides in case one board has a knot or anything. Mm. And you get a total of 10 throws. And on the last throw you can go for the kill shot which is it was 10 points and they moved it down to eight points okay. so and, and it's pretty difficult to go so it's fun it's, yeah. it's a definitely yeah. a good time so is, it, is there like professional teams yeah there is um okay. every year they do tournaments uh the world axe throwing league does i was actually going to join one last year and then COVID hit mm. but they uh they have first second and third place and i think a couple of years ago 2019 or no it was 2020 I think it was a twenty-five thousand dollar for the first place. So it's a pretty serious. Oh, wow. It's a pretty serious thing. It's it, there's some really good guys out there. I'll bet. I'll bet that's a fun venue and party and just the whole thing to be part of. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah definitely cool. for sure. When Noah and I were throwing with you earlier, uh, we ended up playing pig. Like we just made up our own game. I mean, pig isn't. You know, that's everyone knows. It's just pig. like an old yeah. school but game, we, right? We yeah. just like ended Something up playing like pig, easy. and it was so fun. And we were doing like the side, the behind the back, and you know the sidearm one. I mean, no, I, I didn't hit the board on any of those. Um, I think I hit the ceiling once, but it was, it was cool. Yeah, that like, counts for like, something, right? <laughs> there's a lot of versatility, like when you're going in for just like the entertainment value and having a good time with your friends. Um, it's, it was pretty rad. We, I had an excellent time. What's, what's like, like the like technical fun. rules? You have to be back a certain amount of feet. You have to have a certain axe size. So technically, so there's a whole bunch of different rules and regulations when it comes to size and, and, and length. So weight and length of the uh, axe. Okay. But you have to be behind the 12 feet line, which is the red line we have, which gives it one rotation. Mm. And it, I don't think it can be any more than uh, 4.25 inches, so f uh, four and a quarter inches uh, for, the, for the actual head of the axe. And then it's based off of the score. So if you break any part of a line on the rings, it's always the higher number. Okay. Um, so yeah. Nice. Favors that, right favors that for the point system. Yeah, for sure. It's pretty cool. So is your Alaskan, um, is that like a chapter of the league or how does that work? Or like, are you just the Alaskan team or what? A, you said there's the world. The world axe league. Throwing yeah. League. So what is the Alaskan? So how does that work? So actually how it works is you have the world axe throwing league. It's kind of, I guess you could say it's like the NBA or I mean anything or the ASA for softball. So that's the association, okay. Um, and you buy into it, so you pay a, a ah. monthly fee, okay. and you can be part of their group. So okay. part of World Axe Throwing League. Is there a Colombian team? I don't know. That. I don't know if there is. That's a, that's a good question. There. Get your dad into you business Colombian? down there. <laughs> All right, Bobby, yes. you got to start an axe thing. 
Those, those, those AKX going Columbia. <laughs> there you go. There you Let's go. get it going, baby. Right those in guys, Bogota. Those guys scare me. Just the idea of some crazy. I cool think they're more into machetes down there. <laughs> <laughs> machetes. <laughs> machetes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got to be careful there, right? Yeah. I mean, shit. They have a Bushco in uh, in Arizona. Why not have an Axe go yeah, in Columbia? Yeah. Why not? <laughs> do they have a Bushco in Arizona? They do. Yeah, they do oh, man. Holy cow. Alaska Bushco. Yeah. yeah. So it's like the they, third. They fly one. the girls down from here. <laughs> <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> That'd be brutal, wouldn't it? <laughs> oh man! So if someone wants to book a party or like have a birthday party, like how, how do you guys run it? Like do you pay by the hour, or how does it work when you guys come to your you guys' spot over there on Lake Otis? Um, so there's there's a couple different ways to do it. You can either walk in, uh, or you can go online to our website at www.akaxco.com, and you can book. And they're one hour lane rentals. Uh, We also do um, birthday parties, corporate events, uh, bachelor parties, bachelorette parties. Uh, We've actually had a couple divorce parties, and that was pretty fun. (laughs) They put the picture of the the spouse up there. We're going to divide it up for the axe. (laughs) (laughs) uh, You probably got homegirls' friends really getting after it. Oh, man. man. I'll have to show you guys a picture after I get off. But uh, we had a divorce party, and and they took a picture, or they took a cake. Uh, and it was shaped as a uh, as a dick, and, the, and <laughs> at the end, right when they went to go eat the cake, they took our axes and they cut it with the axe. I got, oh, I got some good photos of that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still waiting. We haven't had a, 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 a wedding dress yet uh, that oh, they've thrown through. axes at. So yeah. that's something I need oh, to promote, I guess. Oh, the old I wedding guess. dress, throw it up there. That's funny. <laughs> I mean, what do you do with those things anyways, right? <laughs> yeah, you keep them in the closet forever. Just collect them dust. That's great. Yeah, exactly. That's great. Um, so you, go, you can either go on to our website and you can book for the one hour of um, Just Lane Rentals. Or you can also go um, onto our um, website. You can email us. And we can do the corporate events, and those are usually two-hour events. Are you um, mobile? Come out to the event, or we can come the- to the event. So next week, I have uh, the backyard barbecue. Mm. Uh, it's a country concert. I got that, and I got a. Uh, we do a lot with the military, so we support the military a lot. We give them nice. a pretty good discount. Uh, so I have that next week, and then uh, and then I have a uh, dinner rehearsal for a wedding next weekend, and fr- on Friday. Um, for uh, the mobile unit out in Big Lake. So it can right, go wherever on, you want. And this right is on. a full-time gig for you? Yeah, it's full-time gig. I'm actually just starting another business as well. Okay. Um, What's it's that? A, it's a wood processing business. So okay. we have a sawmill. We have a firewood processor. Okay. And we're looking at getting some live-edge tables. So between the two, I stay pretty busy. Right on. Wow, that's yeah. great. Right on. You, that's man. great. Then you'll be able to make your own little axe throwing. Yeah, 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 for sure. <laughs> right and then on. hopefully uh, soon we're, we're looking at liquor licenses. So Oh, yeah, uh, beer and axes. Crossed. That yeah. makes us yeah, great. Yeah, you know, <laughs> hey, there's nothing better than that, right? So fingers crossed if I can get that, we're working on it. But uh, okay. that's just a work in progress. So Right on. Oh, man. So it's right akaxco.com, and the Instagram is? Uh, you can just uh, Alaska Axe Co. Alaska Axe Co. Or, yep. All and right. then we're also on Facebook as well. Right on. So uh, head on down there to their shop out there on Lake Otis or book them for your event. Um, yeah. Thanks for coming out, man. Thanks for chatting with us. Yeah, hey, yeah, I appreciate, appreciate it, you guys. And yeah. we'll work thanks, on Team Isaac. Columbia, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> let's do it. Let me know when you're ready for uh, AK Axco in Columbia. That's we'll, right. We'll That's go right. down there and get it going. I'll bring my jersey. Maybe hey, start a machete throwing thing. I think that might hit better over <laughs> Holy there. Holy shit. Yeah, they might like that a little more, right? Machete <laughs> throwing All right, brother. Nice to meet you, man. Yeah, Thanks for coming hey, out. Thanks a lot, man. Hey, Appreciate thank it. you guys. Yes. Appreciate it. Yep. That's awesome, man. <laughs> um, there's that, that's actually been uh, coming up a little bit. I, I want to say there's a couple of those Axe companies yeah, it's um, starting, is that there. starting to gain some traction? Yeah, it seems to be a, a good uh, a good business for them. That's really great. These guys are really professional. They have a really nice trailer. Yeah, thank you um, so yeah you're oh, welcome, brother. Man. Thank you. Thanks thank for you. coming out, bro. Appreciate it. Really nice canopy, and, and go see their spot. It seems like a really fun thing. Kid-friendly, oh, yeah. family-friendly, divorce-friendly. <laughs> I'm just thinking if you're doing, like, I like the corporate event thing. If you're doing something with your business or activity, something just totally different. Yeah. There, there ain't a lot of people that are doing that or have ever done that no it's it's definitely a brand yeah. new idea that's probably yeah. been around three years yeah. maybe i never heard of it the axe throwing the axe throwing thing yeah i don't i mean isaac's a huge double shovel fan so i mean i've been seeing him in here for years and so as soon as they opened we went over there yeah yeah i recognize you he does have a seat brother 
All right. All right. What do we got here, man? What is your name, bro? Hey, Steve Cross here. Steve Cross, throw those headphones on. C R O S S. Yeah. Steve Cross. Any relation to DJ Cross? Not that I know of. Thanks okay. for having me on your show, guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. What do you got going on over here? Your booth is beautiful. Uh, thanks. I paint with sourdough rum out of Fairbanks. Oh, okay. All that's you right there? Yes, sir. All that work is you. Yeah. That is amazing. How We're actually going to go buy something over there for our studio because you got some really yeah, amazing man. artwork. Thanks. I'm actually uh, using the botanical from this place. I'm right. making pigment out of it right now. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Oh, that's beautiful, man. So What's did you go rock? You went rock hunting with Justin last summer. Is that right? <laughs> well, we have we both have a fishing problem, too. So uh, all right. We were kind of doing a two for one. <laughs> okay. Yeah. The right old two for What's the name of the business? Good Migration Studio. Good Migration, oh, migration Studios. Studio. How long has that been around? When did you launch? What's your time on I've that? been around for about a decade in our state. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Okay, excellent. So you do venues? I mean, where are you, where are you usually at? Yeah. Alaska, Alaska State Fair. Um, okay. Some of the other festivals. Oh, I've when the, seen when the you, forest, man. Yeah. When the Forest Festival is jamming away. Okay. It's been a couple years now. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I was bummed out they didn't get that going this year. But. And, yeah. And then you stick with the pigment for how long? And then what do you, then you change it up? Yeah, the ones I'm that are over there in the booth today, they've been with me about seven years in the making. Each one of those artworks seven years to make a single piece. Wow. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, they kind of have the kitchen sink of our geology inside of them. Uh, everything from octopus ink to all of our mountain minerals to bone, you name it. Wow. My yeah. wife's over there looking. I'm sure we're going to pick something up for the house. That's actually <laughs> oh going to go goodness. really good. We have a really nice, like, um, Alaska-themed wall. Oh, and that cool, cool. some of those pieces will fit perfect I know, right I wanted, there. I told Rena, I was like, hey, pick something out. We'll give it the full approval. But we want to hang something in the studio, man. We just thought that would be a nice addition to – I don't know if you checked out our podcast at all. or I, I will. I will. Okay, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so we do the, the video version where you can actually go on the YouTube channel. And you can check out the studio. And of course, we got all the pictures on Instagram. But we're looking to get it all pimped out with Alaskan art and cool stuff. So I'll have to sneak by and introduce you to my dumbassery someday. So okay, <laughs> yeah, yeah. we love that. Yeah. Man. So, do you only do events? Do you have a brick and mortar? No, sir. Uh, just travel quite a bit. Just yeah. travel and yeah, get okay. it going on. Yeah. But now, yeah. if someone saw some of your, uh, what's your Instagram actually? Really quick. Good Migration Studio. Good Migration Studio. Yeah. All one word there. Uh, yeah. 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 Are you a one-man band? For the most part. Okay, you got some support, though? Yeah, I always have some support. Okay, yeah, Yeah, behind the scenes, right? Yeah, yeah. The stuff nobody sees? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, the stuff nobody sees. Yeah. Um, Do you do any uh, really big pieces? It seems like all your stuff is pretty, like, tight-knit, small. Um, Do you do anything bigger than that? I do fireplace pieces, big, big triple panels that go behind people's fireplaces, native corporations, uh, businesses, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what got you started in doing that? It's a bunch of failure and accident. Yeah, that's, that's trial the best and error. Explain it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. I'm really good at failing. So. Okay. Uh-huh. Yeah, can, it makes us better. Can you talk a little bit about? You know, I think one of the coolest things about what you're doing is that all the the substance between the art for the art, you know, is your creativity and you know the ink, and that's all from Alaska. Yeah. Like how how that come to be? No one else is doing that. I, don't, I haven't heard of uh, that. Being indigenous is part of their thing. I like to use small mm. batch liquors. Uh, I really love Double Shovel's products. Uh, Arctic Rose, you guys knock that out of the park. Uh, Thanks. The botanical I fell in love with. Uh, I use honey in all of my artwork, and mm. just to marry the two things together. Nice. Yeah. It's, so you about next year I'm gonna have a Double Shovel mixed with a, a whiskey out of North Pole and a gin out of uh, Esther. Uh, coming out about the same time okay oh wow. right oh yeah i like that the word indigenous like that isn't something that <laughs> anybody thinks about or does anymore these days yeah i just created a new woolly mammoth piece and it actually has the flesh oh, wow. and the hair off an extinct animal trapped inside the artwork oh, oh that that's crazy so cool. did you find that no a guy in siberia did i just i traded up to it so i had okay <laughs> Scored it oh, out. Oh, so of, uh, you barter a lot then to a get bit. certain yeah, things. Yeah. Um, I'll trade rocks and gems to get to. Yeah. Over in the booth right now is the world's oldest meteorite. It, okay. pre, it predates our own solar system. So before Whoa. our sun exploded and trapped planets in its gravity, that thing over in the booth has bounced around the cosmos. And I've been nicking it with a diamond blade and putting bits and pieces into my artwork. Oh, that is so. Yeah, well, that how'd is you come right across cool. that? Holy smokes. Accident. 
Yeah, really? Yeah, well, kind. I'm a, I'm in the world of nerds, so. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that black market of nerds, nerd, yeah, yeah. nerddom. Yeah, nerddom. That get the, nobody get the geology. We know a guy, Freshy. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, the world's most expensive gun was cut from that piece of meteorite. It was a 1911. It just sold for $1.5 million. That's the same meteorite sitting in that booth that that gun was cut from. Oh, how, wow. how big was it originally before you got your chunk? Any idea? Uh, it was cut into partitions. There's, It's been circulating. It's, it, was, it landed in Russia, you know on our planet and then uh, it's gone to circulation and if you look up 1911 um, meteorite gun on the internet you'll see I think one went for a million and a half the other one went for 4.5 million dollars uh, the, the pair of guns is wow. that is that wow. piece uh, got a lot of weight to it or is it more light yeah it's a uh, it's a mixture of uh, iron a metal the meteorite made of and it has uh-huh. a, a rare form of rock in between it that's what makes that meteorite actually so rare we're, wow. collectors. were all the uh, elements in the meteorite identifiable from like our elemental chart? Uh, the iron, definitely. Um, most meteorites have a source of iron in them. But yeah, it's the the rock that's in there that's so rare in between those pieces of iron. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow, that's that awesome. is so interesting. I never even thought that's, about it. It's like, like deeper that. than the piece of oh, art. Oh my goodness, man. Man. there's like history yeah. involved there. It's I more love than that. just looking at the bear on someone's wall. Like look deeper. Yeah. You can find out a really cool history. Mm-hmm. Very, very. Is this all you do? You just yes, sir. Really, this is your <laughs> really? entire business. Yeah, it's my entire business. That is great. That is great. So, what's the next event you're going to be That's why I'm at? only wearing underwear today because that's, that's all I can afford. <laughs> <laughs> you got a smile on your face, yeah, and that's yeah. all I can. People yeah, that don't know, see, this man's only in underwear. I don't. I was going to say, I don't think you feel like you're doing a job every day, then, huh? No, I absolutely love this. I yeah. get to travel the planet, collecting a lot of weird odds and ends, and meeting really cool people oh, along yeah. the way, oh, and yeah. connections, and. Oh, yeah. Wow, man. Well, you're a gem in, in itself, bro. Thanks for coming on. <laughs> that, that is a beautiful setup. You really came out with your display. Um, oh. I watched you set up this morning, and it looks like you've done it a couple times. Yeah, but maybe. you had a really nice system to it. I mean, <laughs> I, I, I was, like, looking at it, and I, when it was all done, I'm like, oh, my God, dude. He put 10 times more stuff than any of us did out here. Yeah, he's got he a really nice really setup. Beautiful really beautiful setup. Really nice setup. Yeah. You need a little store, man. No, no, no. No, I, you don't, I, don't, I like, like being in the wilds way more than. <laughs> there you okay. go. That's right. That's right. Are you doing an online that? store? Or? Yeah, I'm, I've been sold out for about the last five months. I a little patience, and maybe in the next couple months, I'm trying to fill the. As Alaska is opening back up again, and I have stuff in, in other spots in the United States, Jackson Hole in California. Uh, as I fulfill the orders, I'm going to go back online and start selling things. Again. Oh, okay. Okay. And then are you in, is it Breck Studio up in, uh, with Justin up in Denali? What are they calling? Yeah, Ju- Cantishna Gallery in Denali. Oh, Cantisha. Okay. Uh, okay. I've, I've failed to get him in stock quite, quite oh, yet, okay. but after this week, maybe so, yeah. Yeah, yeah, all Is right. that the Justin I met the other night? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. you work with him up there? Yeah, kind of. Oh, okay. He, okay. We, we both have a fishing problem. We Okay, yeah. gotcha. Yeah. So, so the, the, yeah, the, it'll get the best of all of us. I've heard a lot about Steve, and then I met Steve once here. No, or was it downtown? I think it was at the 49th thing. Yeah, maybe. I was, it was about 10 below that yeah, weekend. Yeah, yeah. I, th- yeah, I think it was the 49th any, any Christmas gallery. But Justin and I have spent a lot of time talking about your guys' adventures. And la- so last year, you guys went and drove from Anchorage up to Prudhoe Bay to go in the Brooks Range to find... Yeah, we showed up with a minivan in Prudhoe Bay. Yeah, yeah. And what were you searching for? <laughs> uh, we were just trying to follow uh, follow the wild herds of muskox. Uh, I took them to a creek where they have trilobites, like really rare fossils, way up there. Uh huh. Go through the pass. Right. We were oh. just goofing around. There's nothing much else to do during COVID. So yeah, yeah. It's just nice to be out there. Were you seeking anything specific for your artwork? Yeah, just kind of seeing what's out there. Yeah. Chilling, yeah. All right. Just cool. hunting around. Yeah. Yeah. Did you uh, Did you have to change a tire on that minivan? <laughs> no, not on, not on that trip, believe it or not. We took two full spares with us and okay. not even a broken windshield. Like, oh, that's, oh, wow. Well, well, well lucky actually, you. maybe a chip in there. Maybe that's uh, yeah, pretty Good lucky. Good for you. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty cool. <laughs> two men in a minivan up in Prudhoe. It's, it's entertaining. Yeah, there yeah it, is. it sounds like the name of a show. <laughs> two men in a minivan. minivan. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> on Spike. On Spike. <laughs> on, that, uh, on that trip, uh, we were in the... Um, Galbraith Lake campground. Yep, mm. beautiful and, uh, place. Always we, wanted to we check were, that out. We were pitching uh, camp in the middle of the night, and someone had thrown their caribou remains into oh. the campsite. Oh, damn so, it! And there had been active wolves. So uh, Justin built a uh, like a fortress of sticks around his tent with little spikes <laughs> on it, just in case in the middle of the night. <laughs> Uh, were they, were they howling something. around and messing around, you guys? Could you hear them and stuff? Uh, no, not that night, but you could tell they were active by the by the markings on the bones and the flesh. Yeah, yeah, yeah they weren't far off. No, no. no. 
Yeah. Well, thanks for coming on and chatting with us, man. Yeah, and, well, thanks for having me on, Thanks guys. for your hard Appreciate work it. on your artwork, and uh, don't set it all down before I go over there and buy something. Thanks, yeah. brother. Much appreciate the generosity. What's the What's good. the next yeah. event in case people that hear in this uh, next week if they want to find you? I think I'm gonna do the Matsu Festival next out in the valley. Matsu okay. Festival. Yeah. Got right. it. Out the old racetrack. Yep. Nice. Got it. And we're gonna nice. check out that meteorite, and if people want to see it, yeah. uh, check it out. All right. Yeah, thanks, guys. We'll see you All right. Around, appreciate man. Thank it. You very yeah, thanks much. for having me on. Absolutely. Great show. Thanks, guys. Yes. Thank you very much. Yeah, I want to go All look right. at that meteorite for sure. Yeah, that's I think so we cool, need to. Uh, we got. AK Coffee Company yeah. coming in. Oh, she's Keep blush. She's blushing. Too. Oh, she's ready to go. <laughs> are you? Are you blushing? Yeah. Come sit down. You're good. We got Emily coming in. <laughs> or it's the rosé. We don't know. Oh, it's the oh, rosé. <laughs> oh, Emily's been sipping on some not only coffee all day, oh, huh? Okay. Emily's been sipping more than coffee. <laughs> <laughs> the Arctic rosé is pretty good. The Arctic oh, rosé yeah. is, really oh, is really good. Really good. Yes, <laughs> really good. Well, Emily, thanks for coming out here. Um, you are with AK Coffee Company. What is the Instagram handle? At AK Coffee Co. At AK Coffee Co. Super simple. Yes, it is. Very yes, easy. It is. You had a really nice conversation with you earlier today. Um, again, another person who is looking to transition into something full time uh, with a side hustle that, again, is probably something that you don't feel like it's going to be work. It's something you love to do, right? It's true. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So tell us a little bit about the history where you got started, um, I guess, what inspired you to get this thing up and rolling? We found ourselves drinking a whole lot of coffee. And <laughs> Most of Alaskans do. Yep, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> and so whether it was like early hours at the office, we were in the river, up on the mountain, or honestly just taking a Sunday slow, rest foot filled, we were drinking coffee. So yeah. we just kind of thought like, no, yeah, why not? We can't make coffee. <laughs> so yeah. didn't really make sense when we launched it a couple years ago. Uh, me and my husband just got married. We were working full time, going to school full time at UAA. Um, but why not? <laughs> yeah. So do you guys um, do your own roasting and all that stuff? Where's the? Where can people find your stuff? Yeah. So we actually are just about a mile down the road okay. here from Double Shovel. Um, and besides our website, akcoffeecompany.com, we just got on the shelves at both of the new Sagayas downtown oh, in Midtown. Congratulations. Nice. Thank nice. you. Yeah. And also with Hoarding Marmot um, in Midtown oh, cool. as well. So. All right. That's All right. awesome. What's, uh, how many different like flavors or roasts do you guys do? Yeah, so we get to work directly with the farmer and his family in Honduras, and we just source that one bean to a light, medium, and dark roast. Oh, so you guys just focus on that one. You found yeah. the one that you love, and that's that's the one. We kind of found him by accident, uh, just through a crazy series of events, but since working directly with the farmer, it's been so hard to not start another relationship with that like that. Yeah. Um, so we will be onboarding another farmer come the fall time. Um, but does the original that, farmer know that? <laughs> he does. He, <laughs> he does. does. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and he's it's off of his suggestion as well. Just okay. Oh. It, it stabilizes the business. It's kind of risky working with one right. vendor through yeah, the whole all thing. Your eggs but in one basket. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Um, and so that'll become the fall time. So. Yeah. Where do you roast at? We're just about a mile down yeah, the road at here. Your other location. Yeah, okay. we're kind of we have the same landlords actually. Oh, you do. Okay. Yeah. All right. That's um, but so in our the Arctic Business Park. Yeah. Okay. Just down the yeah. road from here. Okay. But. And then what what goes into roasting your own beans? What do you have to do? Tell us about the process. Yeah. Well, you have to have electricity. Yeah. We have a <laughs> propane uh, roaster. Have to have fresh air and a little bit of time. Okay. And a good you can start with a good quality bean, and you're on a good you're on a good start. All of our bean that we work with is all organic certified, uh -huh. um, and so that gives us a, a good head start. Yeah. And having a good quality cup of coffee at the end. Do you add anything to the roast? No. No, nothing. Just like Literally that. just that heat, air, time. How, yeah. how do you know That's when it's it? done? Usually, it, you can hear it. Like, cause you don't want to over roast it, right? Right. right. Yeah. Well, yeah. then you can just call gnarly. it dark something. Oh, <laughs> is, that, is that what it is? Okay. There's the dark mistake. Oh, I mean, uh, okay. dark a dark hair. cider. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's a lot of by sound, but also we have probes that go inside of our roaster that we can track the internal temperature and um, time, but also color as well. Okay. And, and how many, like, beans would you say are in one roasting? 
process? I haven't counted recently, but like about size five wise. pounds. About five uh, pounds. About okay. five pounds okay. 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 I'll have to count the number of beans. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Guess the number of beans and you get a free bag. Yeah, that's how long does like five pounds take? Five pounds usually takes between 12 and 15 minutes. Just oh, depending on what okay, so it's pretty right. quick. Yeah, yeah So it's just quick. like five pounds, five pounds, five pounds, five pounds. And you're getting these beans green? Yeah, okay. they're... They're green bean. <laughs> yeah, I need to get some green beans to try uh, our our cold cider again. Oh, the, you know, oh like a cold brew like style. A, yeah, kinda? like a pre a pre roast. Yeah, coffee cider. Yeah, 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 yeah. We've tried it in the past and just haven't nailed it yet. But yeah, I, you can I use some, some of ours. Up. Yeah, just let us know. Be Let's do it. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm interested to know if you guys are thinking about getting into the micro ground Instant game. Coffee? Because we are big hunters and adventurers, oh, you beat me to it, man. and when we and when we get out there, when we get out there, I mean, literally, the only uh, there's a couple options. Well, at least you have Starbucks now, because before it wasn't it was no, the but, one. And yeah, it was awful. Yeah, now it's like a couple of Starbucks one, and actually at Barney's he has that. Uh, I want to say it's Lion's Head or King's yeah, Head or that, something like that. Yeah, it's pretty um, good. So if we need you <laughs> to make a micro ground little packet so we could take it hunting with us. Yeah, yes. yeah, for sure. You should. You have some? I actually brought a little bean bag with me. We're really early in the product development stages of it, okay. but we have been sampling and kind of narrowing in that process. Ooh, um, and okay. we're calling them bean bags. So oh, cool. you nice. can take it with All you. Right. It's kind of like a French press without the mess. All yeah. you need is like your jet boil to pour hot exactly. water. Exactly. Girl, that's and it. Early that's mornings, it. mornings yeah. like when we're yeah. out to Prince William Sound, like 4 a.m. with all the pals. Like, yes. I love French press, but nobody got time. For that no, sometimes. you no. don't get time for that. Yeah. That's yeah. right. Have you tried like a pack right? Yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. That's what that was music to my ears, man. Oh, that's great. So, so when do you think that's going to be ready? Don't tell anybody about that. We won't. Well, no one's listening. <laughs> <laughs> not yet. <laughs> Um, we're not sure yet. We're kind of just testing things out. We'd love to launch before winter, but we'll see. Okay. We gotta we gotta lock in some stuff. Well, if sure. you need some product development uh, guys in the field, yeah. perfect. You know who to yeah, call. I would love we'll to test it out. Who, sh- who should I call? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah, hit us up at Alaska Wild <laughs> Project. Project. Send us some bags over, That's and we'll it. give you the full test on that perfect. for sure. Yeah, we'd love perfect. to. Perfect. Yeah, we'll be awesome. We'll be sure to give it a good review. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> that way, when it launches, it just blows up. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. There yeah. we go. Um, well, Emily, thanks for coming and talking with yeah. us. Yeah. Um, thanks, guys. The Instagram is AK Coffee Co. Uh, the website is akcoffeecompany.com. dot com. We will simple. be looking out yeah. for the new microground thing. Yeah. Yes. Back Nobody back knows. Back but until then, we will come by. Do you guys do like um, any tours of your roasting thing? We have uh, open warehouse Wednesdays for okay. local pickups, oh. but also for people just to swing in. We are sometimes roasting at that time as well. So okay. Wednesdays, oh. 5 to 8 p.m. Uh, we usually have the garage door open. We got some awesome neighbors too. And I bet it's right good over there. Oh, I bet it does. Oh, for I bet sure. it does. I bet <laughs> it does. <laughs> Emily, thank you. Oh, we appreciate you, you for so coming over, and me. good luck with the, with yeah, all the go stuff make you got sure going check on. Check out a new guy, right? Yeah, Ooh. new guy. Go pick yeah. it up for Thanks, sure. Really Thanks, nice Emily. Nice to meet you too. Yeah. Oh, that was awesome, man. I yeah, we it. need some more uh, coffee options. Yeah, we yeah, really do. I, I'm glad you asked because I was getting ready too. If you did, yeah. um, we needed to get that. Starbucks is like, cool, but we'd rather drink some local stuff. You know. I got those little like espresso Absolutely. shots. That a, that a special shot deal. Those are always pretty good. Yeah, they come um, in grounds or. Yeah, it's like uh, no, I mean it's like instant coffee. Yeah, dehydrated. Yeah, and it's it's good to take one of those big like Sea to Summit cups and put the Starbucks and that in there if you Ooh. want a dark dark coffee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll tell you what. I wake up at six thirty a.m. on the top of a mountain and it's thirty nine degrees. Yeah, you're ready. I get out of my pack. I, oh, it yeah, can be Mississippi mild, dude. Dark. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, 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 gnarly. Yeah, yeah. Do we Hi, have anyone? Hoppa, Hi, baby. Hoppa, see ya. Hi. <laughs> uh, do we uh, Mountain View Sports? We do we got? got are yes. they the last guys they we got are, going on? Yeah. Uh, where's Where's uh, Is it Jake? Right? Yeah, Jake. Jake wants to come talk. I don't see him over there, but he's around here somewhere. Go hunt him down. Go hunt him down. Arenas. Okay. Yeah, the winds of the well, shad are picking up. Oh, over Jake here. just pulled his truck up, so he can. All right, he can come over here yeah. and over there. 
Uh, so we're going to uh, interview the boys from Mountain View Sports really quick, and then uh, we'll wrap it up. It's been quite a day uh, yeah, yeah, out it, here. It flew by. Flew by. Man, sun was shining. Six hours wasn't long enough. I mean, it started out raining, and the sun was shining, and the cider was flowing, and the food was great, and the axes, all that noise you guys hear, that's the Alaska Axe Go back yeah. there. People are launching those things, and a lot of laughter and a lot of cider drinking. And The it's, sound it's, was great today, too. All the, the, the chatter and banter in the background, and... Yeah. This event was a lot of fun, man. Oh, it's been really, really, really Cannot good. Cannot wait to do, a, do yeah. another one. And, and this is going to be an annual event, so any other businesses that want to get involved with us yeah. Yeah. Um, and get on board for the, next, for, Have the next, a seat, brother. for the next for the next dealio here. All right, all right. So now. We now, saved the best for last year, Jake. We saved the best for last. Yeah. Now we have. Go ahead and come on in a little closer or, or pull what's the up? mic to you. There you go. Yeah. What's you, First of all, what's the Mountain View Sports uh, Instagram handle? Mountain View Sports? Yeah, it's at, <laughs> it's at Mountain View Sports. Yeah. Yeah. A little, little closer, simple. little closer, Jake. Right up in there. All right. Can you hear me better now? There you, there you go. go. There yeah. you go. Perfect. The mic's like the, the sound of you real close. Wow. You got a kind of weird angle there. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Right on. So how'd you guys do today, man? Awesome day. Sun yeah. came out. Just a yeah. good, all around good time, I think. Yeah. Cool, cool. Yeah, you just had a really nice booth today. Came, came through with uh, more stuff than I would have imagined you guys would have brought out. I mean, just, did you just put that together last minute? Last minute. You know? <laughs> just back the truck up and throw yeah, this yeah, in we'll there. This this in this that. There's so much good stuff in the store. We just went around, grabbed some stuff, bring it out, and uh, threw it together. But, yeah, appreciate the invite. I have to tell you, thanks to Double Shovel Cider Company. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, uh, Mountain View Sports has been one of those stores that um, I've supported for a long time through staple, my dad. Um, ever staple. since they were actually at the old location yeah. there uh, off of Old Seward. Uh, actually, you guys are still off of Old Seward, but yeah. more more yeah. towards uh, University Mall or whatever it used it's to be yeah. called. Beautiful shop, too, man. You hey, guys have appreciate now. that. A little further south now. Yeah. Mountain View Sports started in 1961. My grandfather started it. Uh, Jack Williamson is his name. Yeah. So, you know, it's just been an evolution. Um, yeah. And we're a little more boutique, a little more fly fishing focused nowadays. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, yeah, it's working. It's really working well. And happy to be on the south side. That's where my family lives. That's where I live. Yep. So it's like roll down the hill, open the shop, and, you know. And have at it. Better rip. Yeah. 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 We, we always like to promote the, I mean, you can always go to the big box store and all that. But there's a different... Um, a different type of fellowship when you go to Mountain View Sports and you and you talk to uh, the old man there or you or some of the young boys in there, always knowledgeable, always willing to just switch up the line or ask them, hey, I'm going to Golcana, I'm going this river, that river, and, and they're like, okay, we'll step right over here. You need this, 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 and this, and you might consider this. And they always have the sickest hats. Yeah, oh, appreciate man. that. Damn good hat. So you got a good hat on right now. Yeah, I think I think Double Shovel has some sick hats. Yeah, too. They, they, yeah, yeah Double Shovel got some nice hats too, for hat, sure. Hats and flannels, dude. That, that's a <laughs> those new yeah. Sims flannels they come out with are really nice, man. Yeah. I got a couple of them. I love them. I love you them. You know. That's an Alaskan thing. It sure a good, is. A good cap and a good flannel. And, <laughs> yeah. and, you're, and you're ready to go. Yeah. And we're ready to go. You yeah. go fishing or the club. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's going to be rainy or sunny or both multiple times, and you're ready. That's right. Yeah, you do. You roll into Mountain View Sports, and I'm, I've been going there since I was a kid. And uh, the, the cool part is you go to talk to the dudes behind the counter about fly fishing, and they've either just gone or about to go to where you're going. So yes. you know they're fi they know the water you're fishing they know they know the gear you need they know the flies that are working right now like is it Kenai or Southeast stuff or Steelhead or whatever you just feel comfortable talking to someone who's like over your level and yeah. that versus everywhere else you go yeah right. yeah you know? right and and it's it's all um, top quality stuff I mean you guys got the brands that um, that are pretty much top of the line top of the things line, yeah. dude. You know, you got the Sims, you got the Sage, you got the the Filson, um, the stuff the stuff that's like you know, if you're not messing around and you're really about your business, that's the place to go. Yeah, we're an Alaskan shop. It's catered for Alaskans. I mean, it's, this is stuff we use every day. Yep. And uh, we try to keep a wide spectrum of stuff. So if you're just starting fly fishing, come in and talk to us. We'll hook you up with something that's affordable. You know, that'll work in multiple different fisheries. We'll get you hooked up with some flies and send you out there with a little bit of knowledge on, you know, you're going to have a good, a good chance to catch a fish after yeah. you come in. 
you know, whether you're trout fishing or salmon fishing. I mean, and that, you know, you spoke to our staff. They're a they're bunch great, of fly man. fishing nerds. Like, there's a lot of <laughs> young kids that are like, you know, they come in with their dads or whatever when they're little. And, like, my old man, John Stacer, is the one who really runs the shop. And, uh, he's a gray haired guy. He, yeah. Oh, yeah. He, he put my scope on for me. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so, we sell firearms too, of course. But it's yeah. like, it's these young kids that are super interested in, the fl- in fly fishing and have been shopping there. It's like, you know, you need a summer job. You want to work here for a bit? And, um, yeah. Then you know, they're hooked. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> we, you know, we've always been proud about the local expertise that our shop brings. Yeah. Wow. And yeah. that's just, it's from experience. I mean, these yeah. kids are going out fishing. Keenan over there was fishing the Deshka last night, waited for the opener, went out and camped in his jet boat. Okay, midnight, start swinging flies and catching kings. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. Uh, I'll say it, it seems, his experience seems like it bodes well for the king run in the yeah. Sydney drainage this year because he caught a bunch of kings last night. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. it hasn't always been the case in the last couple of years. So, I mean, I don't know. It's, it's a fly fishing shop and, and a yeah. hunting shop too, but. What's more than that? You guys got a lot of good women's gear. You guys have oh, some yeah. good winter gear, mm-hmm. um, some, some, uh, some brands that are locally made that I've seen over there. Mm -hmm. Um, Like I I brought up the hats and it's just like anything that you could think you would find at some of these big stores, like definitely go to Mountain View Sports first because they have it there too. And they're willing to, you know, go with the price that you see. And and it's, you're supporting the local Alaska company, which is all we're about. You know what I'm saying? Mountain right. View saved my ass. So I was on this sheep hunt, and on the sheep hunt, when I shot my ram, I blew off the scope mounts on the Tika T3, like the ones that come from the factory go in these little holes, and they're just like, they're notorious for breaking off. And so I broke them off, and I had like one week before moose hunting to get them replaced. And you couldn't find like the aftermarket good ones anywhere except for Mountain View, and they actually had them. And so I came in and then, yeah. you know, set it, set my, reset my scope for me. I would have done myself, but it was just awesome to have local gear. Last you know, minute you know, crunch. They like were able to very take care of you. Yeah. Of kit. And it turns <laughs> out that these like on the Tika's like this aftermarket scope bracket is super important. Yeah. And you guys carried it. <laughs> yeah. So was Mountain View Sports ever in Mountain View? Yeah. That's where it started. Originally. Yeah. Yep, back in 1961, as I said, I mean... Where exactly was was that store? Man, I couldn't tell you. I haven't been to Mountain View for some time oh, myself, to be honest, <laughs> but... Um, it used to... It evolved from, like, selling all kinds of sporting goods and, okay. and into, like, you know, an Alaska outdoorsman shop selling everything. Yeah. yeah. And then, you know, you guys have experienced some of the progression. We moved to Midtown from that location yeah. and then expanded that location. And then we've gone back to more of like kind of a boutique type yeah, style shop. Smaller. But, you know, I worked in, in that Midtown shop from the time I was a little kid, like cleaning mm-hmm. toilets and whatnot. And just, you know, grew up working it. And um, I don't know. We're proud of it. I mean, it, it really is an Alaskan shop. And oh, it's got a man. lot of Alaska heritage. Yeah. And it's beautiful. You Tell us about the... You um, in, man. Oh, you yeah. Just, dude, like, it's, so you walk in there, it's like... Oh, this is my kind of spot. And, and they if might be one of the there, only you know? places that has that polar bear. Yeah. Tell us about that polar, that polar bear. bear. Yeah. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, really? dude. You seen oh. the, that polar yeah, bear yeah. that they used to have? I don't. Is it in the new shop? Yeah. Okay. Front I, and I, center. <laughs> front and center. And <laughs> yeah. that's and that's one that your grandfather shot. That's right. That's yep. insane. Yeah. Dude. Well, you can't do that anymore. No, you I mean, can't. That's, that's, you can't. What year did you remember when you got it? Was that many years ago? It was the last year that it was legal to hunt polar bears in Alaska. I want to say it was. I'm gonna get the day wrong. I'm gonna get the year wrong. Yeah. I think it was before. Oh man, it was in. The, I think it was in like question. late 50s, early 60s. But yeah. I should know this too because I've, you know, I've yeah. Come with the history, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You need a pamphlet. <laughs> R.I.P. Yeah, to pamphlet. my grandpa, but I, you know, I've, I yeah, talked to him right. about that story a lot of times in my life, and I'm just not one for dates, I suppose. But <laughs> long time ago, yeah. we'll go yeah. there. It was yeah. a long, long ago. <laughs> yeah, people yeah. are like, people don't even know that you could shoot polar bears yeah, yeah. Like, oh, that's sure. when it yeah. happened yeah. yeah yeah that thing's and whoever did the taxidermy did a good job man because that's what well, 50, really 60 old. 60 yeah. 70 years old yeah. now yeah yeah 70 it's 80 really years old that thing looks looking piece man yeah yeah looks really good beautiful mount we've got the world record doll sheep in the store the swank ram that was taken in the wrangles i think in the early 70s yep and that yep. that one that's front and center i think there's 
five rams up on the wall there. Yeah. Yeah. That one on the far right is mine. It's a big ram, but it's dwarfed by the rest of them. Yeah. yeah. They're all just <laughs> complete studs. So. Hey, Dad, can we put mine on the other wall? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Put it further away so it doesn't have to get, doesn't have to get Let's bring it out, just bring it out a little bit. <laughs> I want some mag glass in front of it. <laughs> Man, well, Mountain View Sport, man, thank you for what you guys do and the family yeah. tradition and providing the knowledge and the equipment that us as outdoorsmen need. It's just an amazing store that you guys have. I literally hit it up 15, yeah. 20 times a year. It's a pillar of the outdoor community in Anchorage, Alaska. I mean, there it was is. Mountain View and Gary King's and, you know, in the 80s, 90s, when a lot of us, I don't know how old you are, uh, Jake, but uh, you... That was there the Gary King days. There, okay, probably. there wasn't, probably, the big box wasn't a thing anymore, right? It's like it, there was just those little shops. And it's amazing through all the evolution in Alaska that you guys were able to stay alive, too, because I'm sure there was some, some ebb and downs, flows and yeah. ups and downs, right? Some hard times. and Hey, loyal customers and yeah, uh, yeah. You know, staying true to our roots really is, is what's done it. And, and you guys have done that. And, yeah. you know, I mean... This type of collaboration with other local businesses is so important now. So that's part of our ethos for sure. You know, it's cool. shop local, support local businesses. Yep. Yep. Um, it's just better, frankly. Yeah. yeah. It and is, and, and we, we would love to. to knows what they're yeah. Doing. yeah. We'd love to go do a podcast from you guys' store. That'd be if great. If you guys think about yeah. that, that'd be really, really. We got some of these other businesses that we want to come in there and, and do a whole production in there and get you guys in there. Maybe you guys, after you guys shut it down, sure. and then that way you can get some of the cool stuff you got in there. I think one of Mountain View Sports is definitely on the yeah. top of the list. Well, maybe we can Parties. get Pops on and hear a lot more. Oh, about get the old some man the telling some stories. And in the, in, in the evolution of the store and the history of it and, and all that sure. is, is truly fascinating. Yeah. And a lot of us lifetime Alaskans probably don't know all that. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. So There's a lot of history there that there needs is. to be told. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, it's, you know, it's an interesting story. It's a yeah. it's a long-lived store. And, yep. uh, yeah, of course there's some history there. I oh, mean, man. God. We've had so many awesome employees come through there, like some of the best guys on the Kenai. Josh Hayes is a name yeah. I'll drop. Like, yeah. yeah. Where it's yeah. like, you know, these are guys that are, like, shooting rubber bands at each other as teenagers in the shop. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, and learning, you know, yeah. cutting yeah. their teeth and, yeah. like, learning and going out and just being, like, <laughs> really successful fishermen operating their own businesses it's just yeah yeah so yeah we're proud of it i i would i would love to do that i'd also love to just sit down and talk about fly fishing for like oh we we got we'll do a full nerd out on that we'll do a full nerd out on that fly fishing stuff (laughs) yeah yeah Yeah. i just got back from the knack knack well i guess a week removed from the knack knack but i don't know man alaska i can't say enough about fly fishing in alaska i mean here in south central the opportunities are so numerous and so awesome and it's just yeah. like we're stoked when somebody comes in is interested in learning fly fishing and you know we'll send them to the right creek and with the right stuff and you come back with a happy customer and that's that's what it. it's all about customer for life you got yeah. it you got it yep that's great well thank you for coming and chatting with us and coming out for the day yeah, and man. uh the family tradition is amazing man it very is, very man. nice to meet you yeah. i'll yeah. be in there soon i need some flies for the gold canna that's right good. on. Yeah. <laughs> My pleasure, guys. Hey, man, yes. thanks for coming in. All right. Of course. Yeah, My so pleasure. Much. Good thank to see you, Jake. Mountain View Sports. Um, is that the website, too? MountainViewSports.com? That's right. And right. then the, the Instagram is obviously Most at Mountain View Sports. Yeah. Go see the store, man. It's a beauty. Yep. Yeah, get yeah, in there. Do you guys out. do um, ice fishing stuff? Yeah. Okay. Winter. Sure. All right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we got to get in there oh, for yeah. that. Okay. That's another one. Yeah, I didn't know that. We've been getting into okay. the ice fishing lately, and that's one of the things we want to do with the kids and the family. So good to know that you guys have the. Yeah, have and, the it, gears and if you want to hit the mountain instead, we've got blue and gold. Oh, oh yeah, oh, dude, shout out oh, to yeah. the boys. Yeah, yeah. oh yeah, for yeah, sure. yeah, winter yeah. activities covered. Thanks oh, for yeah. Right. some love, man. Thanks yeah, for, that. for sure, sure, man. Yeah. yeah, we tried to get him over here. He had something else going on. He said, "Yeah, yeah. yeah. happens. Yeah. We're busy. Yeah, it's summer. It's a tough time. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> not, not enough time. That's what I mean. Yeah, <laughs> and we want to know with a beautiful day. So yeah, today's a good day. It was, man. Started off raining and turned out sunny. Yep, sounds like Alaska. Exactly. <laughs> well, thanks for coming out, brother. Hey, thanks. Enjoy. Pleasure, guys. Have All some right. cider. Right. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you. Yep. Take care. Uh, well, I think on, that kind of that kind of wraps it up yeah, huh, for the day yeah, uh, we nice got cap. all the vendors in here thanks for everyone that came out to dudes day if you miss dudes day we're gonna have it annually uh, yeah. we'll have more vendors we got a lot of people out here that are supporting us and thank you to all the businesses that came out and all the listeners all the viewers that were on the live feed um, the people that are gonna watch too, it 100 thanks to the sponsors man 
Big you time, know, big time. I wanted to get one uh, shout out. I don't know if we got a mention in, but uh, Kevin Dana down at Barney's, man, he, he threw down a, mm. a Barney's pack. Yes. And he's got a Yeti bucket down here and uh, got a raffle going on. So I just want to throw a big thanks out to, to Barney's. Kevin couldn't be here. Um, you know, he's got his staff doing their thing at the store, but he wanted to, but he, he hooked us up with that bag. And I want to thank him for that. That's like a killer Barney's bag. Trump it is killer. so light. That is yeah. such a nice bag. That Yukon bag oh, is man. that is Cream the ultimate the mountain bag, dude. It really is. Yep. And somebody's gonna be very happy with that. And I wanted to say too, on the Barney's level, I, I just went and saw uh, Kevin last night. Picked up those tickets, and uh, I want to let all the listeners know his store is stocked to the gills right now. Yeah, he's got it, it all he now. He is stocked to the gills. So if you're looking for gear, you need something. You need new poles, gloves, boots. Yep. Pack. You, I mean, you need it. He's got his store full. Go get it now. The the floodgates are about to open. Mountain hunting is about to start. So uh, go check him out and uh, get That's yourself great. some gear. And thanks to Double Shovel for hosting the event. Absolutely. Yeah, Having Jack. the boys out here. Thanks to Katie, man. She came through and hooked us up big time. Yeah, yeah Katie she's did a, awesome She's job. a G, Jack. Yeah, you guys, she's you, a gem, man, for yeah, sure. Yeah, man, you guys, got, sure. you guys got really good people here. Yeah. You really do. That's your great. team, your vibe, everything here is, is great. Thanks for, for having us here. We yeah. appreciate it. Yeah, the team rocks. They're they're pretty awesome. Great yep. culture, better better people. Yeah, yep. and thanks for everyone that came out, man, and supported Absolutely. and spent some of their hard earned money out here on some of these little shops. Yep, um, we love it, man. Alaska, stand up. We appreciate you. Thank See you. It. We'll be coming at you next week. Much love. Happy Father's Day. You remember my speaking to you of what I call your over cautiousness. Are you not over cautious when you assume that you cannot do what the enemy is constantly doing? The Alaska Wild Project podcast is brought to you by the following sponsors. The Bait Shack, located on Ship Creek upstream of the bridge. Can't miss the bright red shack. They're the go-to fishing gear rental and guide service on Ship Creek. Tight lines and fish on. Come hook into the action with them. Hit them up at thebaitshackak.com. Lawn Pro AK, your year-round professional property maintenance company, providing services such as weekly lawn maintenance, driveway sweeping, snow and ice management, and tons more. Get your free estimate today at LawnProAK.com. Anchortown Dogs, located at 4th Avenue across from the old 4th Avenue Theater. Look for the blue and gold umbrella. From reindeer dogs to bomb euros, they've got you covered. Anchor Town Dogs, your local gourmet hot dog and sausage cart. Menegato's Accounting, locally owned and operated advisory and tax accounting solutions. Passion, experience, diligence. Learn more at menegatosaccounting.com. Double Shovel Cider Company, located off Arctic and 58th. Handcrafted Alaskan made cider. They also have a tap room downtown on the corner of 5th and E. Check them out at doubleshovelcider.com. Serrano's Mexican Grill, two locations, one on Tudor, one on Northern Lights. The Northern Lights location has their new tequila bar. Check it out. Also see their daily specials at serranosmexicangrill.com. AKO Farms, located in Sitka, Alaska, built from the ground up with concentrates as their single motivation. Find their products such as their sugar wax, full spectrum diamond sauce carts, and more at the Treehouse AK and other dispensaries around the state. Ask your local bud tender about AKO. TheTreehouseAK.com, located at 341 Boniface Parkway. Your all-in-one cannabis and CBD store. Ask the bud tender what the strain of the day is to get your 10% off. The Treehouse, where the culture lives. Marijuana has intoxicating effects and may be high performing and addictive. Marijuana impairs concentration, coordination, and judgment. Do not operate a vehicle or machinery under the influence. There are health risks associated with consumption of marijuana. For the use of only by adults 21 and older. Keep out of the reach of children and marijuana should not be used by women or pregnant or breastfeeding. Tailored Restoration 24-Hour Emergency Home Services. Helping Alaskans restore their dreams since 1972. Services include fire, water, mold, post-emergency cleaning, repair, and remodeling. Give them a call in Anchorage, Eagle River, Matsu, or Fairbanks. Hit them up at tailoredrestorationalaska.com.